we started our conference from this gala event. I'll recap on what was said during this gala opening. Uh, both uh, Professor Otskoy and uh, Vladimir Shvitsov mentioned very important strategic goals of the country, of the state. I'll add up that this laboratory will have not just the Office of Modeling on the grounds of which we cut the ribbons, but also there will be some other spin-offs um, related to testing uh, that will be the laboratory, which will be the reference uh, educational standard. By evolving the standard, we'll suggest creating similar laboratories and other points of growth of the country, especially on the grounds of the universities. The priority for us is Kazan and Rostov and Don universities, and we'll go further eastwards. That way, we'll create cooperation consortium between those laboratories. Uh, so it will be a large uh, center of scientific knowledge, which will be state nationwide oriented. That way we have started our conference most successfully. I have the information that there are about 500 people online connected to us and this number will grow, I guess. Uh, here in the hall, we see lots of uh, empty, see it's uh, mindful of the requirements of keeping social distance between people and we could digress from that mindful of the pandemic so we start our conference and uh, now we'll open up the first plenary session and a very important words uh, will be uh, said uh, by the representatives of State Duma and the Minister of Transport. And it will be extremely important to get to know the attitudes and situations of the regions uh, which develop transport planning and, and, and role in intelligent transport. I'll introduce the participants of the first plenary session. First, uh, there will be Alexander Vasiliev, uh, State Duma, Deputy of the Federal Assembly of Russian Federation, leader of interregional uh, public, uh, move, uh, public movement uh, of the regional system called Broken Roads. Uh, uh, so I'll introduce other as well. Arifkat Minihanu, uh, Director of State Unitary Enterprise Safe, uh, Road Traffic Safety from Kazan. And please do come up here to the podium and sit here. Sergei Harlashkin, Deputy Chair of the Government of Leningrad Region on Transport and Fuel Energy Complex. And uh, Sergei, uh, will come up later. He'll get uh, connected to us because there are some technical limitations as well. And also, uh, those people in State Duma are extremely uh, busy now. And Alexei Bakary, Director of the Department of State Policies in the sphere of uh, uh, automobile and uh, city passenger transport of the Ministry of Transport of Russian. Uh, Federation, due to a wide range of reasons, uh, our leaders and heads uh, of the departments will get connected uh, uh, online. So we start plenary discussion, and I would like to give the floor to Alexander Vasiliev, uh, State Deputy. Alexandra, we're glad to see you. Uh, Sultan, I'm here. Great. Yes, you can hear me. Wonderful. Morning, Mr. Chair, dear colleagues, I'm here to welcome all the keynote speakers uh, of the conference. Uh, 
transport engineers perform a very important mission. Uh, last year, we survived uh, through the pandemic, and this year, yet it's not subsided fully. Uh, the transport system experienced lots of stresses, and we have to sort this out. And uh, The government, the state is giving us a helping hand in that. We would like to cooperate with the state when it comes to the transport services to local residents. Even in small towns, uh, the transport structures are changing. Micro logistics are coming up even, which impacts transport system and its functioning. We should keep that in mind uh, in planning and funding uh, different events. Uh, also, there is the uh, presidential May uh, decree related to uh, road traffic safety, despite the fact that last year there were much less uh, passenger cars by households. Uh, now, nonetheless, uh, uh, the government had uh, to uh, push uh, the uh, reference requirements for drastic reduction of casualties on the roads. Uh, we have good national project of safe and quality roads. It comes to um, also to the repair of the roads until 2024, 55% uh, of regional roads and 55% of metropolitan areas should be fully repaired. A week ago at State Duma, there were discussions uh, and reports about that, and we have been approaching those reference uh, KPIs. Uh, and, dear colleagues, if you don't agree with us, and you might say that in your respective regions, uh, you haven't attained uh, that much, so we could discuss that further on with you. As to save road traffic, we can see that it's necessary uh, to uh, strengthen and scale up the political declaration of intention about that. Uh, according to new UN directive, it maintains that projects uh, similar to Vision Zero should be around in each and every region and each and every country, which should turn around the situation with road safety. There should be uh, the uh, cooperative effort of the authorities, of the politicians and local residents, all together through joint endeavors, they should put roads in order, unfortunately as yet as to Vision Zero program at the level of government, it's not uh, moving forward rapidly. There were several meetings dedicated to that, but we are aware that a lot depends on uh, changes of legislation, changes in the code of misdemeanor and others. For example, this is the example. Today, you're in the Polytech at the university at this conference. Uh, and for several years on end, there are broad discussions going back and forth uh, about uh, rather uh, aggressive uh, use uh, of uh, vehicles, uh, sometimes individual mobility, uh, vehicles, uh, for example, and uh, some of those people on the scooters uh, are very aggressive towards the pedestrians. Uh, our country is part of international assessment program. Now, it measures uh, safety of the road infrastructure per se, showing to which extent the quality of road infrastructure expedites the safety of uh, all uh, the participants uh, of uh, the road, uh, of the traffic. Kazan uh, uh, Center is uh, doing a lot of work in CIS countries about it. It's important to keep in mind uh, 
that as to audit of road safety, uh, there are uh, some uh, special bylaws uh, and uh, regulation, but sometimes it's rather difficult to read them out fully to get the full information about this or that road, whether it's fully uh, safe, uh, uh, it's a scoreboard like one star to five star uh, motorways and roads in Sweden, highly ranked and uh, roads and Russia, highly ranked in uh, Russia are very uh, different, uh, unfortunately. Sometimes it's necessary for us to figure out how much money should be invested into our roads to make them not just smooth, but safe as well. Um, and uh, in the project of safe and quality uh, roads, uh, some funding appeared and there is a standalone federal project as well. Uh, and there was a the meeting in the presidential office uh, and there is a pool of project uh, uh, connected to renew rolling stock and repair and streamline Easter structure. Tug and Rock City was mentioned, they found uh, the project there, they're going to uh, renew um, a streetcar that is tram uh, rail tracks, it's 300 billion rubles for three years, that's a lot. So we should increase the efficiency of the, all the operations, all parts of the project for the safe and quality uh, roads. Uh, unfortunately, there are some cases when no municipal buses with large capacities were provided to uh, different cities, but they were uh, losing the battle to small uh, shuttle cars, which were not safe, uh, but uh, it was more convenient sometimes for local people to use them because they were stopping almost every step of the day. And there is the ranking of different regions regarding uh, safety of the roads. Uh, this is quite fair, I think, because uh, we uh, should take up lots of measures at the level of the region in order uh, to uh, be ranked much higher, uh, because after that we'll be entitled to 60% discount uh, at uh, procurement uh, of the municipal transport. I see a lot of people I know who were those who were at our Volgograd uh, transport conference. Uh, and as the result of your joint efforts uh, and discussions, uh, I think uh, very good proposals will arise about high efficiency of the uh, national project operation and will convey this information the minister and to the government. Thank you, all the best to you. Thank you very much, uh, Alexander Vasiliev. Uh, yes, it's true that we have uh, to put together a resolution after our conference. This resolution will be one of the deliverables of our conference, but it will take another two weeks for us to um, compile all the proposals and then the resolution will be fully ready and will make it available for you and it will be a program document like policy paper to help the state uh, to develop territories do transport planning and develop the transport systems uh, and also those kpis and indicators will be included thank you very much so our conference uh, goes on and uh, we'll be showing you the outcomes of this important work slowly and gradually. Thank you very much because we have good lots of discussions. That's why I say slowly. Dear participants, there is one very important thing I would like to underscore. It's related uh, to the ability to ask questions. Uh, you can do it via QR code or telegram. I will be receiving these questions and I will be managing this process and please uh, 
take care about this process. If there will be urgent questions, I will address them to our panelists or participants of the plenary discussion. So we carry on. And the next presentation is connected with the implementation of the tasks in terms of the traffic planning within the framework of Safe Roads Project in the Republic of uh, Tatarstan. Fkat Minikhanov, you're welcome. The floor is yours. Dear colleagues, I used to be a professor, so I'm used to speak from a uh, stage. Thanks a lot for inviting me. This is uh, environment is a little bit new to me because uh, here you are speaking about more specific solutions. I will try to find some uh, to tell you about some general situation in our Republic within the framework of uh, the trends we are developing. You understand that if several years ago we were doing things uh, at a very uh, calm pace in the subjects of the country, now we have to uh, do more and look around because uh, the federal standardization is going on and it goes on at a very uh, rapid pace and i hope very much that in the result of uh, our work we will come to some results and outcomes also we used to mention the automated uh, transportation systems back uh, in 1980s when practically nobody was talking about them but now there are so many players uh, on stage and there are many projects uh, connected with uh, such topics as safe cities for example and there are subsidies uh, allocated to all these projects but that was an introduction and i'm passing over to the presentation itself i hope you remember that by the 1st September 2021, the subjects of uh, uh, the Federation have to develop their regional strategies of the digital transformation. And these regional strategies have to include the processes that take place at the level of the subjects of the Federation, uh, the processes at the level of the municipalities, and the processes in the federal, uh, republican and municipal authorities. And all these have to be integrated. The task is not a simple one. And back to where I've started. What did we have before that in terms of digital mobility? We had uh, three projects, uh, Safe City, Smart City, and last year, safe and good quality uh, automotive or motor roads, the so-called ETS. Uh, under the patronage of the Ministry of Construction and Architecture, Ministry of uh, Civil Defense and Im Emergency Situation. And the last one, safe and good quality motor roads under the uh, patronage of the Ministry of Transportation. And here, there is a question, how do all these projects be integrated into the development of the regional strategy, in particular in the Republic of Tatarstan? We have chosen our own way. 
though the federal authorities uh, uh, promise us that there will be approaches uh, developed uh, to uh, implement this strategy by the 1st of June. There is no
quite important factors on the thresholds uh, here uh, and the threshold value. It was very difficult to identify the centers of responsibility for all those KPIs first. And uh, we are resolving technological uh, integration. Here is one of the examples. This is important uh, for the Ministry of Transport. So uh, there are federal indicators uh, and regional values uh, and different roads and congestion. It's a five contour model. There are six uh, events, different legal acts, informational systems. It's monitoring of this indicator. This is the fragment of the structure showing these uh, parts of it structure, federal indicator, and we have been applying them and we use uh, different other indicators related to hands efficiency of the transportation company. I think that all those solutions uh, could be good. Uh, so we work along uh, different directions of all. All our efforts, everything uh, we do, should be integrated into the digital mature subject. So we should do also mathematical work. We should collect data, do data mining first, compile data. We should do all that. We should regulate that within the frameworks of funding as well. If KPIs and all the indicators are rather bad uh, and we would show the HUD, uh, the authority of the federal constituency, we'll say these KPIs are bad. We need more finance to improve the situation. So once again, I would like to emphasize one thing. Within a digital mobility, the issues of transport modeling and transport planning are going hand in hand together. I will not dwell on that in great detail. In this particular case, uh, uh, we'll emphasize safety of the roads. There should be a set of requirements for that. Uh, and this is part of the national plan for safe and high quality roads. First stage is uh, 370. Uh, for the first stage uh, of work, we received that money. We've got lots of uh, customers uh, and many regions. Uh, Everybody started uh, developing uniform platform. It's software and hardware, and there are seven basic modules in different metropolitan areas in different republics. That way, we'll be interacting. Of course, there are some errors in it as well, and for uh, funding uh, for that because needed large uniform federal platform with very good uh, system interoperability, but the federal authorities, I take it, didn't take up full responsibility for that. Uh, it's the priority for the regions. And at the beginning, each region was doing uh, their own work uh, in a detached way, you know. And Dan uh, is doing the same thing. We need more uh, streamlined and smooth interactions between the regions, but we just integrated those seven basic modules and some problems evolved. Yes, I have some time. So it's the uh, uniform platform, but there are four stages. Now we're at stage two, and uh, <clears throat> I will not dwell in great detail on the different internal parts of each stage. These are the modules of uniform platform of the monitoring and control of transport system. I'll dwell on certain issues which evolved when we were working at the creation 
platform in the process of work and i take it in some of the regions there is no this uh, platform now it's possible to resolve those uh, things as well unfortunately in tatarstan as to the digital twins uh, which is very important for us digital twins uh, should compile and analyze the data and the condition of the street and road networks unfortunately we have only embarked upon that in tatarstan but for us it's a very high priority once again uh, you should be fully aware uh, it was in 2012 when the decree of uh, Russian Federation was issued about the creation of spatial data. And since 2017, we should all use digital maps. Uh, so uh, this is very important. Uh, you know uh, uh, that we work now on internet uh, uh, substrates as well and there is the uh, provision there are digital maps uh, and we are working so now it's very important uh, to work uh, on rovs uh, remote uh, operated vehicle and drones uh, street road network uh, is very important now and it's very important uh, now, uh, the real substrate and uh, map uh, of geolocations is not available every place. In Tatarstan, we have problems with that. Uh, what uh, do I mean? This is very important for the creation of digital twins. Uh, you know that we should fully streamline and map uh, uh, different uh, places uh, in the streets uh, and as you know and this is very important uh, uh, that we have got a database we created ourselves but also we received the data from different modules which are embedded into this transportation uh, system this is for passenger transportation meteorological data photo station uh, surveillance cameras everything this is very important uh, all those issues evolved back when we started creating the platform and some data mm, were uh, just in the competence of different organizations so we had to come to terms now ourselves to use this data to integrate them into our system uh, this is very important uh, and when we consider the system of monitoring and dispatching in each federal constituency they have got their own system of dispatching and monitoring mindful of passenger transport uh, each municipality has got their own although there is uh, funding in different federal entities in different subjects of russian federation so it's possible to create a uniform uh, transportation dispatching uh, system but nowadays different localities different municipalities have their own and in Tatarstan GLONASS system is well developed navigation and uh, getting the notifications and alarms about emergency situations we have GLONASS in uh, Tatarstan at the Republican level, but smaller towns, smaller municipalities have got their own navigational systems, their own databases, although we have got uh, the Republican system of navigation, we have to make use of commercial one. As to the Russian level, our GLONASS, air GLONASS, the integration of uh, uh, passenger transport and hazardous goods transportation those systems should be well developed we integrate different types of transportation should be navigated which is very important we created the platform to receive data we have uh, to turn to different developers software engineers uh, 
data owners. If we are going to come up with recommendations, making different models and forecasts, uh, we have to deal with the patchwork of different diverse, sometimes detached uh, developers and software engineers and data owners. Nowadays, uh, of we have got anti-crisis systems, uh, dispatching and monitoring center in all the municipalities almost, and we're going to create the uniform center according to the decree of our president. There will be uniform platform uh, which will be fully enrolled by 2023 and we'll be enrolling it around other regions as well. So that way we cope with the problems of lack of information sometimes and detached. We keep saying data, 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 but there are some interim problems. And unless we have data, we won't need those sophisticated systems even. And uh, we had to deal with this problem, not just for transport, but for entire Republic of Tatarstan. We have got the platform of data. We call this platform uh, uh, the uh, fa a factory of data. This data factor, this platform is helpful to collaborate upon the single standard of access data using data factory we integrated 55 information js uh, and uh, communications and uh, operators and it operators and telecom data factor will simpl simplify the process of data analysis uh, Yes, and I used to tell them, you created the data factory because you don't want to ramsack through uh, dirty laundry. There is a data factory. When they need some data, they just pull it out without checking up whether this data is valid and high quality uh, because nobody is uh, willing to look through all this dirty linen in the basket, so to put it. Uh, so uh, some data is not verified. Yes, we have created the data factory. We do have access to data, but we did not resolve the problem fully. We are at a transitory stage as yet, but uh, all the same is convenient because uh, this database is existing nonetheless. Do I have to finish up my presentation? So this is our uh, platform. Just bear with me for a few more minutes. Uh, we create data, but then they should be processed and models should be made on the basis of the processed data. We create data to collect, uh, we collect this data uh, to create models. Uh, we put together this platform. We uh, have got this platform of situational center. On the basis of this model, uh, we can identify the locations of placement of uh, automated uh, surveillance cameras, uh, photo video fixation of uh, the road traffic situation in the territory of Tatarstan Republic. Uh, and uh, I might say that uh, it's rather easy to use uh, this system. It's a modular principle, like a Lego construct, like building blocks, and will carry through with the development of tools of platform for this platform of the Situational Center, Emergency Center. We work together with Roth Auto Door. Uh, you know that off the door uh, give a gave us this uh, model. These are the prospects of the platform of the situation and the emergency center. It consists of different modules. Module of uh, forecasting uh, should be most important one. Uh, otherwise, we won't be able to come up with the recommendations uh, uh, to the authorities. But uh, we'll 
haven't integrated this uh, fully. That was about situational emergency center notifications and alarms about uh, violations of the road traffic. Uh, and in Kazan in September, there will be Kazan Digital Week 2021. It's international forum last year we had it online this year by the same token. It will be online, but there will be some people offline this year. We hope that, and uh, there will be an exhibition and fair, and uh, you can book the booths uh, in this expo center. In Kazan, this exhibition and convention center is located in proximity to the airport, which is very important. And with this, uh, this uh, conference uh, we also have an online uh, event digital super zero uh, it's all russian it marathon 177 teams participating this is an annual event and in 2021 uh, also uh, there will be about 200 teams participating in digital superhero online and offline. Uh, there will be different formats for that, and there will be on uh, fintech projects, and uh, there will be a webinar. Uh, the, it will be also uh, in future and in December, we had those webinars of the International Forum of Kazan Digital Week, although we don't have the exact dates, but nonetheless, we host our webinars. It's related to education as well, digital technologies and the sphere of education, uh, 18th of May 2021. It was not a high scale event, but all the others will be much larger and we'll see you among the attendees. And I invite you to Kazan. Thank you. Are there any questions? Yes, there are some questions. I keep receiving them. But now we'll abstain from questions because we're tight on the schedule, but we'll hand over all the questions to the keynote speakers uh, and uh, we'll receive the responses later on. We'll aggregate them and make them available. I would like to recap on what Rifkat Minahanov said. Systemic approaches in Tatarstan Republic are very important. Uh, they are highly instructive. It's the great information from the first hand from Tatarstan about strategic development of uniform digital transport system of the entire region. This would become the kernel, the core and the backbone uh, of, for creation of other regional projects of the strategic level but uh, we would like uh, to hear something about advanced uh, training and uh, in service training uh, all of the personnel yes we do that we have got a very good uh, training center it's about digitalization and other issues for in service training uh, and all the public officials, the civil servants uh, were trained uh, even to uh, write software uh, pieces. Uh, in the very beginning, at the first stage, each ministry, each department should have a couple of uh, IT specialists. Uh, this is about digitalization. And I keep saying, okay, guys, we should optimize the structure and do automation first as to digitalization. And the first stage, it's about optimization. So as to automation, we haven't completed the procedure of automation. So it's a bit preliminary for us to speak about full digitalization. Some disagree, but that's the way it is. And we know that situational emergency center as uh, yet it does not work to the full swing. Everything should go online nowadays. 
keep asking questions about digitalization. Uh, people are asking questions about digitalization, but yet we are far away from real digitalization because uh, this is about streamlined business processes. Uh, we don't have it all yet. So let's speak about automation. It's less ambitious, but this is the true. Digitalization will come next. Uh, and as to the situational center and the platform which is used, we sign never use with uh, four uh, different universities. Uh, we have got uh, our uh, intelligent transport systems chair in uh, Korean Republic as well. As to this conference, we conduct similar events of smaller scale like that. Uh, and we have uh, uh, intelligent transport uh, systems, chairs in other locations, uh, in other universities uh, as well. And uh, we continue this work so that uh, there would be uh, some enrollments uh, free of charge because there are just commercial uh, the uh, high school graduates to enter our university and in uh, Kazan University uh, the competition among the enrollers uh, is very high and we have our own uh, is university chair of intelligence system, but it's a very small chair with just very few places for students. There are lots of problems yet, uh, but I'm quite outspoken with you about it. And those majors, those specialties which are related to arrangement of road traffic, intelligent transport systems should be in high priority for higher education. But now there is sequencing, uh, actually, there is the reduction of those places, uh, the reduction of the number of the enrollers uh, for this year. But in our Police center. Uh, we are dealing with digitalization, although we jump over automation process. Thank you very much, Rivka. Uh, but we still cherish hopes uh, uh, that uh, uh, the government will increase the number of uh, enrollments for this chair. This is very important. Otherwise, it will be commercial and parents will have to pay for their children to become students of that. Uh, possible to refer to market forces only. It should be a public-private partnership about it as well. And we'll reflect that in the resolution of our conference, by all means. We are participants of the conference. Uh, we have to move quite rapidly. Now, direct public policies uh, in transport or the Ministry of Transport of Russian Federation, Alexei Bakiriye uh, connected to us. Before that, he was uh, in the official meeting and now Alexei Bakiri, director of the Department of State Policies and the Sphere of Automobile State Passenger Transport of the Ministry of Transport is here. Yes, and we can see you, we can hear you. My apologies for being late. I was in the official meeting and I think, unfortunately, I won't be able to uh, see it all the way you want to conference uh, uh, because I'm very uh, busy with official meetings. My welcoming, uh, well, my warm greetings to all of you. It's so wonderful that every year I'm invited. Uh, it was not every year when I uh, was able to make it here. Sometimes I was sending someone else uh, instead of myself because I was very busy in governmental meetings. I was 
words, my considerations. Uh, it will be like a monologue, maybe no official presentations or something as to the topic of transport planning is very important from different and points is the system of measures to develop uh, road economy. We have a project uh, and there are some recommendations about uh, that. And uh, we conveyed our requirements uh, uh, to uh, different regions uh, and we provided uh, them with uh, our advice. Uh, comes to the measures of federal support. Uh, we've came up with those uh, recommendations. Uh, they are not binding, they are not mandatory, uh, but uh, there are different documents in transport planning which uh, are very important. Uh, the programs for comprehensive and integrated development of uh, road uh, systems, uh, Trans municipal transport and so on. Uh, sometimes uh, all those requirements were not in line with official bylaws and documents. Uh, so it took some time to put everything in order because uh, provided uh, uh, those municipalities did everything right, they would have been entitled to some uh, budget funding, uh, public funding, uh, and uh, regions were receiving different advantages and benefits. Provided the documents were well developed by them, uh, but this transitory period is over and all the other selections and screenings of those uh, organizations and municipalities uh, uh, selected to be entitled to public funding uh, will be assessed different standpoints. Uh, special experts council created uh, to do this uh, screening and we ensue from the fact that we'll unroll the activities of this advisory uh, board. The experts uh, council or advisory board under the Ministry of Transport and we'll be dealing with the proposals of the regions and the information they provide us with. As to municipal transport, public transport in big city uh, metropolitan areas, uh, the documents for transport planning, uh, of course, are going hand in hand with the uh, road economy and municipal transport in common use. It's an integrated system, but as to such a document as the federal project for modernization of passenger transport in different, uh, different uh, uh, metropolitan areas uh, and city agglomerations. Uh, should be developed last year within the frameworks of the national project of uh, BKD. We launched uh, the events uh, and for uh, related to renewal of the rolling stock. Uh, and this is a very important activity. So as to the results, uh, and you know the results, it's very important that at the stage of selection of different regions, uh, very active role should be played by transport planning as the document. Uh, it's uh, the assessment we did when we were assessing uh, 
the documents when different regions were sending us the applications uh, for the standard. It included the assessment of transport policies of the regions formalized in the documents of transport planning, uh, the availability or the uh, lack of transport model, which would enable us to modify this application of the region uh, so that they would demonstrate that uh, they are very progressive and they really need public funding in order to develop very useful system. Uh, and uh, colleagues who were part of this experts examination commission were making uh, very rigorous assessments uh, of different materials and applications uh, submitted by different regions to us about their reforms in a municipal transport system and road uh, safety and quality success of the implementation was related uh, related to the fact that kpis were achieved first the initial of 4 billion rubles were extended. It's not a lot, mindful of our huge country and big needs in renewal of rolling stock. But nonetheless, it was good because this money uh, was extended by the government and the dynamics of positive implementation of the project in Q3 and Q4 of the last year enabled us to make a decision to extend more finance in the amount of 1.8 billion rubles. That was very good for the renewal of the rolling stock buses, first of all, but also trolley buses and trams. It's not the renewal for the sake of renewal uh, per se. Let's see if there is a renewal of rolling stock and a new renewed uh, trolley bus or bus will be stuck in the traffic jam every step of the way. Uh, so we want to encourage people using public transport. Uh, so the efficiency of that would uh, plump to zero. So within the frameworks of a new federal project and within the proposal on the frontal strategy, the project which was developed uh, on the grounds of the government, we are putting together a system of requirements and approaches uh, not just about the rolling stock renewal as a standalone activity in federal national project, uh, but a comprehensive integrated approach. Uh, uh, all the infrastructure, land base, uh, transport uh, uh, systems, and rails, uh, and street lighting, and electricity, and everything, we should be supported by the federations. Uh, yes, many regions are saying it's good to renew the um, rolling stock, but if it's more integrated, the electricity and everything it needs, uh, uh, then we'll need more investments, more money, and they won't be, the regions won't be able to do it on their own. Uh, and uh, there was the discussion within the governmental uh, commission about uh, transport and spatial development. Maybe there will be some budget credits or whatever to add finance. Uh, finance ministry has been contemplating new strategies to be helpful and it's possible to raise more funds uh, the form of budget loans uh, with subsidized interest rate or something like that out of the budgets of the regions for modernization of the infrastructure and objects of transport sector, infrastructure, intelligent transport systems, rolling stock renewal, parking slots, uh, and also uh, transportation. Uh, I mean, change nodes uh, and uh, transport interchange hubs, transportation monitoring of passenger flows, fully up to automated, all that is needed, all that puts together the system of transport services. They should be covered by this very ambitious project. Uh, and in the current edition of the federal project, uh, it's not final yet, it's not sufficient maybe for resolving all the 
high scale tax uh, tasks in the sphere of public transport and so on but frontal strategy is very important for us and i hope that we'll put together extra mechanisms extra vehicles and extra sources of funding to give a helping hand to different regions uh, uh, paradigm as well and 12 uh, city agglomerations uh, uh, this uh, year uh, getting financial support. Uh, this is a very important. Uh, this is good support. So this is uh, very important. Uh, there will be uh, money, some money at least. Uh, this is a uh, very important last year it was a million uh, billion uh, but there are and within the year maybe it will be uh, possible to do something about it uh, so this is uh, very important uh, last year we started in june uh, one way or the other will uh, just uh, scale up. We have uh, radic activity. I think this will be quite interesting for you and for the future as well. Thank you. Yeah. Oh. Can hear us. We are going to. It's you mentioned in your introductory work, and hopefully tomorrow we can resolve some of the community for their proposals, and we'll be trying to help in terms of the address of the council you mentioned uh, to organize the education of the, the community. Because uh, we are gathering here not just because we can to have a conference, but we understand that it is high time for the expert to come to you. Uh, this is something. And there was a lot said. Uh, and uh, hopefully we'll be in touch further on. Dear participants of the conference, the plenary session is uh, going on and I pass the floor to our great friend, the general manager of Symmetra company. We've already met Vladimir Leonidovich remotely. Now we'll see him face to face here and Vladimir, the floor is yours. Welcome to the podium. Good morning, dear colleagues. I understand that the Vice Premier Headquarters has introduced 
some discrepancies uh, into everything planned because actually the speaker who had to uh, present now is not yet here and I propose to replace him and tell you about all the big processes that are going on now in connection with the huge update. The main thing on which all the effectiveness assessments of the investments into the transportation sector are based on, they are based on the transport forecast. And I would like to show you the vision of our country, what a reliable transport forecast means. This is short, uh, issues of uh, what I'm going to present to you today. What is the basis of these uh, assessments? What uh, actually uh, impacts their reliability and what next? You see our forecast on a monthly basis for one uh, transportation facility and the data. In order to show that with some effort, this is not uh, uh, that simple, not that uh, cheap, and maybe not that quick, but we may achieve quite reliable forecasts in the future. I'm not going to tell you much about ourselves. We are on the market for 17 years. If you do not know about us, you may read in the internet. We deal with the uh, delivery of uh, software products, uh, uh, planning, traffic planning, and we develop our own platform for the mobility of the regions that may be used to manage the traffic situation. So what is this forecast is all about? There's no future per se. All the future is based on the uh, projection of our expectations. The technologies that we use in order to evaluate the perspective of uh, transportation flows may be compared with the digital navigation, digital vision uh, of the future. You see the pictures how the future may look like if uh, your shield, uh, uh, if your front window is clean or not. So the transportation, the traffic model, when used correctly, gives you the same opportunity to see everything well, even if you're driving uh, at night because your windshield is absolutely clean. The models are different. There are some that are simpler, that are some that are more complicated, micro level, uh, different nodes are taken into account. In order to plan the roads, traffic, uh, traffic lights, etc. There are other models that uh, help forecast uh, uh, the behavior of uh, the traffic. The integration of uh, the network into one construct is a possibility to predict what is going to be next. Because uh, when we can predict, we can manage or at least try to manage. And it means that we do not simply see the situation, but we can manage it. A few words about strategic models that, to our opinion, are on in the basis of the uh, traffic planning tools and all the rest. So the first model is what if. if this model doesn't answer the question how to make the traffic model efficient, optimal. It helps the engineer to work with the multiple factors and find those that uh, lead to the best result. And we think that the traffic model is good because it allows not only to calculate some projects, but it allows also to calculate and computize the integration of traffic system, which means that all the uh, means of transportation, all the transportation flows work in synergy, which is one of the main goals. We're going to have a presentation today about the German uh, experience of integration of railroads into the big cities. And you will see the example how this is done. Uh, the president of our uh, country mentioned that uh, the railroads have to work for the well-being of our cities as well and integrate it into the big cities. Uh, and we have such examples, for example, Moscow. What impacts? Several factors. Certainly, 
the motivation and the wish to achieve these targets. And I'm not going to stop here because I think we have this wish in our society. This uh, uh, good uh, number two, good quality data. Uh, number three, methodology and also human resources. Uh, also, uh, we've heard about this uh, before. Now, um, for the initial data, there are many initial data. Uh, we may have different uh, uh, types of initial data and a more comprehensive approach. The analysis of all the data allows us to reproduce the logics, uh, how the residents of one city or other select uh, one mode of transportation or other and uh, uh, build the forecast based on this uh, long time forecast. The main conclusion is uh, the more the data we have, the better. Software. Software has to be understandable, meaning that all the models as of today, especially the models for the operators of toll roads, where the banks uh, are also the players, Uh, these models are used by various people, meaning that the methodology has to be understandable. All the modern simulation methods are quite open, transparent and uh, understandable. And we uh, are also subject to constant audits uh, in this area as well. We supply so our software to Russia and CIS country, and I know many people present here are using these products of ours in many regions, including St. Petersburg. We are working on the integrated traffic system uh, in Taganrog now using the same technologies. And the technologies are well, uh, they have confirmed their effectiveness and worthwhileness human resources. This is probably the main bottleneck that stops quick development of the market because there are not so many experts who uh, are real masters uh, in terms of forecasting tools. And uh, most of the people present at this conference are in a constant search of such experts. So we uh, want to develop the infrastructure to grow such people, more and more of them. So we are supplying all these licenses to the Polytechnic University and uh, will be ready to supply to all those who would like to have them. If uh, your project is simple, then everything will be cheap, but quick and cheap but if we are speaking about long-term focus and the models of uh, variable demand it will take longer time and will be more expensive you see the diagram for the development and the assessment of the traffic uh, projects you see how long it takes for example, for a city with more than 1 million population, you can't expect that everything will be finished in three months. The experience uh, of the European countries uh, tell us that six months is a minimum for such a city. It is not a very simple work. How to uh, optimize uh, the costs? What is the most expensive uh, part here? Human resources. The initial data, the uh, software uh, do not take uh, as much. The most expensive are highly qualified specialists, highly qualified traffic engineers. Not so many of us, and uh, we are the most expensive part of this pie. I know that all the good experts in this field are uh, overloaded with the work. Summing up, traffic models is not just a scientific entity, not just a research, it is a tool for planning. 
in perspective the transport model the traffic model is a model of uh, human behavior in the region and uh, this is one of the technology for digital mobility uh, as for the forecast time is needed as for methodology it has to be transparent good and reliable in order to have good uh, experience uh, sharing we have to communicate with each other and our conferences are actually meant uh, for this specifically as well and whichever country you go to you will see how the traffic models are used in those countries. For example, if you go to Dubai, you will see it immediately. If you go to the US, you will also see this immediately. Fortunately, in our country, these technologies are also uh, under development, not uh, as advanced as in the countries I've mentioned, but they are working, I may assure you of that. And in conclusion, a good traffic model is a foundation of the whole construct, the foundation of the intelligent systems of uh, mobility management and the basis to pass over to strategic mobility management. We are going to highlight this uh, more and more in our articles, in our presentations, and all the models exist and now. Uh, help uh, help the integration within the re regions uh, and we are discussing with the colleagues how to uh, build up systems for the uh, comprehensive traffic planning of the regions uh, so that the system will uh, receive all the necessary data for this and uh, will uh, everything will be stored in one place. We are going to tell you many more things today. Uh, you have to have uh, uh, an attitude of uh, uh, good quality work and uh, not uh, uh, trying to do everything quickly with our models. Thank you. Otherwise, the models will be working, I may assure you. Thank you, Vladimir. Once again, many questions. Uh, I will probably ask you one. One, actually, I will answer myself. And the uh, next one, maybe Rivkat Mavgalievich, very briefly. To your opinion, if the practice you are developing and uh, you've told us about the assemblage of many platforms into a unified regional platform to your opinion which federal ministry should uh, supervise this work and regulate it we do not have this now but this is your opinion right now i know that each region is working such things uh, the, on their own we hope that it will be uh, working more or less in unison. Which ministry, to your opinion, uh, will supervise? Ministry of Transportation. No secret here. If we look at the development of uh, automated transportation systems, uh, Rosaftador and Aftador have started very active uh, participation in this field very serious uh, players uh, road builders they have uh, enough funds they have enough possibilities uh, to work in this field and we received an answer from the ministry that since uh, a lot of funds is being uh, spent for traffic infrastructure why not look at the whole infrastructure Uh, why uh, don't we unify at least some elements of this system? For example, uh, video cameras uh, for the violation of road traffic rules. 
in Russia, I must admit, the progress uh, is unique in this field. When uh, we remember how the smart roads have been discussed at our conference and the quality of roads is of paramount importance here because uh, within the framework of road construction, road repairs, all the infrastructure issues, uh, including automated uh, traffic systems may be resolved. The smart road, it depends what we are prioritizing here. But in any case, we are uh, we depend here on Europe as well, on their understanding of smart roads. And uh, unmanned cars, you know, uh, the issue is being discussed today. And I know about the charging stations, charging infrastructures. This question is under discussion in Moscow. We uh, are very much connected uh, on the capacities. Oh, that way we should streamline the system, simulation, modeling, road construction, everything uh, should be um, consideration also charging stages uh, that might guide the development uh, of evs uh, kazan also we are discussing uh, that although there are no state rules requiring uh, construction of a charging uh, a station but we have to do that there should be charging infrastructure in place and we should partake of the experience of uh, the other countries in uh, this uh, and it's rather challenging uh, to install uh, long-lasting charging uh, devices uh, uh, in the underground parking lot example but there should be terms of reference provided by the customer of that so that uh, when we know all the requests uh, and requirements then we will be able to do that charging infrastructure is extremely important because evs are developing evs are part of uh, rovs remotely operated vehicles we should develop charging infrastructure yes thank you very much uh, recap on that there was one question how is it possible to assess the quality of uh, legal regulations in the sphere of intelligent transport systems uh, regulation is not in place yet uh, uh, as to the level of technical development uh, it's not high enough and of course authorities and businesses should get interest and, and should get in uh, also engaged uh, in this in 2021 we should create vertical uh, normative uh, legal regulation we should prescribe in the law all the parameters uh, of requirements for intelligent uh, transport systems. We are uh, lagging behind the world and that maybe, but we started developing that. Yes, I reiterate uh, that the system is not perfect, but you know, when money comes along, uh, different actors come along, money is the king. 
when there is a shortfall of funding, it's difficult for us to do anything whatsoever. We are lagging behind the Western world, although there are lots of different standards taken on board, and, but uh, uh, money is not there. But when uh, money was dispersed by the government for the development of intelligent transport systems, and immediately when money came along, different actors came along saying, I can do that, I can do that, and so on. So this is about money as well. Uh, when we look uh, back, 1980s, 1990s in Europe, in America, in Asian countries, uh, there were uh, ministries and committees of intelligent transport systems. Uh, and uh, they have got well streamlined and small policies, policies in place. All those countries, we don't have it here yet. Until we have that, we won't go far need really need intelligent transport systems uh, to have good and safe roads. Uh, we spoke about uh, digital mobility and intelligent uh, the transport systems. When we are speaking about safe city, smart city, we uh, take uh, care of that as well. And of course, we need fund funding. Uh, uh, all the other countries are developing that. Uh, in Tokyo, they have got a special directorate uh, uh, for that. In Japan, in 1996, about 60,000 sensors uh, and measurement units uh, IMUs were uh, created uh, was part of smart uh, systems and intelligent transport systems. Uh, we don't have it yet. We have those uh, and uh, there should be special centers created uh, to control this activity. But all the processes uh, have got the inception stage and then they uh, are run more or less smoothly. Thank you very much, uh, Rivkat. Thank you. Uh, yes, ready to do my part of work to develop those systems. Dear participants of the conference, we have to uh, wrap up the first plenary session. In the very end of this plenary session, we envisage signing an MOU. So before having this 15 minutes break, uh, we'll have to sign this agree agreement uh, and you should participate in this process. Uh, distinguished participants, attendees and the uh, participants of the plenary session, dear panelists, come back here. Distinguished participants of the conference. Now an MOU is being uh, signed between the company Digital Development of the Region and Not for Profit Partnership Association of Tra Transport Engineers. On behalf of the company Digital Development of the Regions, the MOU is signed by CEO Denise Babayev. On behalf of the Transport Engineers Association, the MOU is signed by the president of the association, Sultan Jean Kaziev. Memorandum of Understanding is signed.
understanding is signed between the autonomous non-for-profit organization for public transport and non-for-profit partnership transport engineers association on behalf of the autonomous not-for-profit organization for public transport the mu is signed by ceo alexander Pitirimov on behalf of the transport engineers association the mu is signed by the president of the association sultan jan kaziev you is signed there is no sound going to the headsets no microphone is used. Distinguished uh, attendees, the first plenary session is over. We'll take a small break and we'll continue with the second plenary session. Dear delegates, we start our second plenary session and the moderator of this plenary session will be Dmitry Shabelnikov, deputy head of the Information Directorate of the Press Service of the Governor of St. Petersburg. Good uh, afternoon, dear colleagues. I'm glad to welcome you and want to invite our highly esteemed presenters to the presidium. Uh, Ekaterina Bryazgina, deputy head of Rosdorni, the research institute uh, on road building. Evgeny Litvin, member of Presidium of the Interregional Public Organization Coordination Council on Organization of Traffic. So, I suggest we set up the rules and agree about the timings. The presentation will last around 20 minutes. Do not get offended, please, but using the right of the moderator, I will stop you if you exceed. And I will do it like this. This is a tram bell that I have prepared specifically for this meeting of today. It is a recording. We know that the public transport uh, uh, has to stick to the timetable. That's one of the factors of high quality services. So this uh, bell will be a symbol of our sticking to the timetable. Uh, so now I want to pass the floor to the deputy head of Rosdorni, Ekaterina Bryazgina, and we're going to discuss one very serious issue. It is clear that any project starts with an idea and then come the calculations. Depending on how uh, many data, what quality of data we take for the calculations, the same quality will be the focus and the same quality the effectiveness of the project. So Ekaterina will tell us about where should we take this data and how we can make the process of uh, getting the data cheaper? Because we understand that uh, uh, the worse the data, the lower the effectiveness of the project. So I pass over there, uh, stick to you, and I start your presentation. Good afternoon, dear colleagues. Thank you very much for the invitation and the opportunity to present here. So we start. I would like to start with the following. The topic of our second session is uh, modeling as a basis of uh, success of the infrastructural projects. To my opinion, infrastructural projects 
uh, have to be based on the planning documents. If e either regional uh, planning documents or uh, higher level uh, planning documents, uh, any infrastructural doc uh, project has to be interconnected with all the other ones. It can't exist uh, by itself. We at our institute receive a lot of uh, documents from various bodies in order for the documents to be checked and uh, to provide feedback about their quality. Even more uh, documents we receive from the Ministry of Transport uh, in order to assess the rolling stock uh, in different regions uh, on how to update one or other infrastructural decisions and uh, solutions. We check not only the justification part, so, but we also uh, look at the models. But what uh, uh, can we say about the model without the initial data? Everything seems to be smooth, but the deeper we go, and we have reflected this in our methodological guidelines, that the initial data has to be provided together with the array because unfortunately there are quite often we can see frauds when the developers do not want to spend much money and carry out uh, the uh, studies once a week for 15 minutes and then they extrapolate uh, uh, these results for the rest of the time i want to underline that the quality of the model uh, has to be very high. Without a good quality of the model, we can't uh, achieve a good model. We, on the other hand, understand the interests of various stakeholders. There are worries that the uh, data that are collected won't uh, uh, comply with the expectations of many stakeholders. Uh, they want to see within their uh, different PPP projects. Second, we understand that the cost effectiveness of uh, the projects is uh, um, reversely proportional to the quality of the data. I've heard from the colleagues uh, from the region said that they've spent uh, more than 20 million rubles for their uh, research because the territory of the region was huge. They had to carry out the research uh, everywhere. And this research included uh, social questionnaires with a good level of representation, uh, calculation of passenger flows uh, and throughputs. The better quality of data we want to receive, uh, uh, the more we have to collect this data. It's like a snapshot of the situation which is happening now. We're interested in the technology, they're the sector's center of competences, and we're disconcerted about the quality of data, whether we should trust them, whether they adequately reflect the situation, because it's way easier to purchase ready-made results of the Per survey, it's not always when you see the methodology, when you only see the outcomes, the results, they were processed by internal algorithms. We tried to get raw data, we saw them, and we saw that when we interpret the data, the confidence interval uh, is uh, wrong you know so this data might not be quite valid and of course we should outreach all those operators having this raw unprocessed data so that we should together uh, develop the mechanisms of processing what would be the degree of processing of data so that they would be trustworthy there are different uh, sources of information and sometimes uh, uh, these data are very far-fetched transport engineers who are qualified to interpret that should do that of course uh, we develop different scientific directions uh, at Rosdorne when it comes to uh, for example weight and size uh, 
control weight and dimensions control. I would like to get the feedback from transport engineers. Uh, or maybe you will support us. What's your take on it? Uh, we'll try it. So what would I like to say within this national projects, uh, we should uh, place automatic points or weight and size control. You can see this data from the passport project and the federal uh, roads, 417 control points should be uh, located. Uh, now there are only 25 in number for the entire federal network. It's not a lot, but mindful of the regional statistics, it's more attractive. So there will be deployment of 600 uh, such control points uh, uh, at the regional network. Now we have got 250 of those control points. But when we um, when we assess uh, regional projects, the projects of different federal entities, we can see that regions have got uh, uh, more detailed plans about size and weight control, which is indicative of the fact that as all networks uh, points of control they are well ramified uh, we show different points uh, so when we consolidate all those data we see that regions confirm that they will install more than 1100 units uh, it's important to set up the system uh, of the weight and size control. And these control points uh, uh, do not only weigh uh, the transport, but also show the freight intensity of transport flow, the load of each uh, transport vehicle, measuring the distance between the axles uh, and measuring the sizes of the vehicle and the uh, speed characteristics uh, of the transport flow and also intensity and composition of transport flows uh, on the federal motorways. Uh, that way flows getting through the frame of weight, size, control, which are installed directly on the roads. Uh, they, then, uh, if it's an overload for the freight vehicle, then they will be fined uh, on the basis of the rules. Uh, they break transportation vehicles into 27 different categories. Uh, uh, it could be passenger car uh, no, or uh, just a uh, motor car or a truck. So all this information across the country nationwide at all the points weight and size control since December 2018 in line with law 433 there is a special order of Ministry of Transport about monitoring of the road traffic this order is big headache for many uh, federal entities because annually the assessment should be redone it's very costly every time there will be the procurement uh, to procedure if they don't have their own equipment i would like to say that nine out of ten indicators which are necessary to monitor it's possible to get this information from the points of size and weight control which are available in the region. Uh, maybe not only this data is required, but, th but this is free of charge source of data which is available in your region. So you should grab at this opportunity. So we'll get information about intensity, uh, composition of the flow, congestion, uh, overload, density of traffic, time uh, slots, buffer slots, uh, uh, this is very important. This is a very good and promising method. It will be possible for us as Rosdorni organization uh, will be getting this information on a regular basis. Uh, 
from the federal level, but not just to monitor based on the Minister of Transport uh, order, but we'll do that for our own ends because we need that information internally and we'll uh, unite this data with other ones and uh, so they will be submitted to the Minister of Transport. Uh, so. Uh, there are different video surveillance systems in different federal entities uh, and we can do monitoring uh, which will not be very costly uh, and maybe we can do it constantly and on the basis of that it will be much easier to update and renew transport model which is available in each region uh, and now the region has to commission that uh, and then the developer will develop the model model and will pass on not just outcomes of modeling but the model per se or the simulation model if it's a good uh, developer what happens next oftentimes the simulation model is dusting and the shelf everybody keeps forgetting about it it's some place somewhere they say we know we have it but we don't know where it is exactly and if uh, there will be a data flowing in to update this model, if federal entities can do that, mindful of digitalization, uh, we'll uh, expedite our efforts along the way to digitalization. What else is important here? Here you can see the confirmation how via this data from the points of size uh, uh, and weight control, we can do the simulation modeling of the uh, freight uh, outlines and freight uh, carcass. We have been discussing that as well. Uh, so we spoke about uh, those uh, systems and database. Now the Ministry of uh, uh, Transport now is referring to the system of uh, control uh, of the road traffic. There are lots of other um, pieces of information uh, there as well. And now we are also starting to uh, upload the digital models of the road so that we'll be able to analyze the condition of the roads, not based on paper results, no manual diagnostics, but we'll see uh, the condition of the roads constantly. There are lots of different tasks and issues here. When it comes to the implementation of new projects uh, uh, like clean air, uh, it's also based on the vision of new development of passenger transportation or uh, other projects which are about comprehensive uh, a modernization of public transport in metropolitan areas. We should do thorough planning within the frameworks of the national and federal projects. So there are two control points uh, on transport planning until the year end. All the federal entities are supposed to develop and confirm, until and confirm the documents for transport planning of the federal entities of Russian Federation. And until June last uh, next year, as they'll uh, be assessed by the uh, Council of Experts uh, who will be examining uh, the validity of the project. They will look through all the documents which were developed and which are ready, and they will be submitted to the Minister of Transport of Russian Federation. Uh, we should be very serious about these tasks because there will be experts examination of the experts or panel of experts of the Minister of Transport. They will be validating all those projects and suggestions of different federal entities. And and then uh, transport minister will decide whether this or that entity has got good enough program to be entitled to funding. You may go for another 35 seconds. Okay, thank you. It's great that I'm being heard by the entire sector community of transport engineers. I would like to say that we have got plentiful of different tasks and uh, our organization uh, is uh, also recruited no specialists and models. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, Ekaterina. Dear colleagues, are there any questions for uh, Katerina?
Razgina, not yet, I think. Uh, or is there a question? Yes, there is. Go ahead, please. Unfortunately, it cannot be heard because it's not via the microphone. Just to be on the safe side, I'll repeat the question. Uh, because first you started without the microphone and nobody heard you. The access to data of weight control, how will this access, access be provided? Uh, as to the points of uh, uh, weight control, they are installed by the owner of motorways. Uh, uh, then the, uh, this or that federal entity signs a contract with this operator. Sometimes it's a contract uh, related to decree, uh, official decree, or it's more sophisticated based on uh, PPP, public private partnership. But developers should seek data from uh, their cusp, uh, federal entity that is subject to Russian Federation. Thank you. Yes, go ahead. No, microphone. Uh, parameters of the intensity. Repeat that, please, because nobody heard. Yes, once again, I have the question. Uh, as to different... Uh, instruments of control there is no such a parameter of intensity of transport uh, flows for large sized uh, vehicles same goes for video surveillance cameras some only pinpoint the perpetrators uh, but it's not only about density so those surveillance, uh, video surveillance cameras, they're constructed in such a way that mostly they are keeping track of speeding and then it's about fines they impose upon the perpetrator drivers. How do we collect data about intensity and composition of the traffic flow? Uh, no, uh, it's not specified in the register of uh, instruments of control. Sometimes it's uh, video surveillance uh, for video registrators, and then it is a manual processing of the video row uh, with uh, big errors, of course. And second option is, uh, in the morning, I saw some of the colleagues here in the plenary session room, those who are uh, offering automatic solutions when video materials from any surveillance camera are processed in a good way and they count the and assess the traffic flow density. And this data will be. But of course, we always uh, ask for the entire massive date of data to do then arbitrary sampling and validation. Well, now question into the microphone. Uh, how do you compare the data used for making calculations uh, versus the current cost that is state standards? Nowadays, the development of technologies. And the methodologies uh, of developers when they develop documents of transport planning do not allow to get very high quality of data, but science is moving forward. 
and uh, uh, also vendors, uh, suppliers of those uh, points of control are present here, and maybe they introduce into the register of instruments of measurement their own equipment and their calculation modulus. It's great, new ideas and solutions are being born uh, throughout our conference. This is most important moment of the conference. More questions? Then we continue. As a moderator, I would like to, to uh, say a few words. There is one very picturesque and interesting real way uh, going along uh, the uh, Gulf of Finland shore. It's uh, used as a passenger road. It goes uh, between St. Petersburg and Sestraresk, which is a satellite town on St. Petersburg <coughs> in the health resort zone. And uh, time after time, uh, the question was raised about uh, launching a streetcar that is a tramway to go along the shore of the Gulf of Finland. Now we'll turn to the experience of in, in German integration of the roads in, and railroads into the city transport phase. A Deutsche Bank engineer consulting representative, our guest from Germany, Gunter Koch, will come up with his presentation on the screen. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much that I can present you today <clears throat> some about the regional integration of regional railways in urban transit. I have uh, an agenda for you with a short introduction, some remarks to the transport markets and transit network development, as far as a transit system, especially in Germany, train station as her urban hubs and tram train at the last, some additional mobility offers of Deutsche Bahn. Remember that Deutsche Bahn is one of the biggest uh, railway business in Europe with uh, 300,000 uh, people and 7.53 million passengers per day. And I'm coming from the affiliate Deutsche DB Engineering and Consulting. We are doing consulting since 1966 with uh, 5,000 employees in 40 active countries. Okay, let's start. <clears throat> what are the different markets? Uh, we are talking about urban transport and regional transport, and we have to bring it together. Uh, there's also a long distance, but uh, that is not in the view of today. <clears throat> On the left side, <clears throat> you see, sorry, Some S bahn trains from Hamburg, they can run. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay, I'm sorry about uh, <clears throat> I will only show uh, short uh, the pictures I had. Um, you see on the right side a uh, tram train in Kassel, uh, in the same on the same track with Deutsche Bahn on the top and in the street running uh, on the bottom. I talked about Deutsche Bahn and also about DB engineering and consulting. So um what is the view of the market regional and urban transport and we have to connect it and we have a lot of found a lot of solutions to do that uh, one example is the s-bahn in hamburg you see it on the left side uh, in the urban area it's running uh, <clears throat> with a third rail with 1200 uh, volt dc and these trains can also run on the railway outside the city they run about 50 kilometers outside the city center on the convention on the track of the conventional railway with catenary and 15,000 kilo volt 
and we have to bring that all together. And what is the philosophy we have uh, in Germany? We have uh, the principle, we have a, a trunk line with high speed and then intervals, high speed does mean about um, maximum speed of uh, 100 to 120, it depends on the distance of the stations. We have an optimized capacity on that trunks and we have a medium coverage of the catchment area. And we have on the outside uh, of the trunk line some branches, also with high speed and long intervals. In the city, we have about uh, two minutes or 10 minutes. Um, off the trunk line, we have 20, 30 minutes or 40 minutes. We have headways determined by the traffic uh, we want to offer. We have a low coverage of the catchment area there. We have feeder lines with a lower speed, sometimes regional lines, but sometimes also metro lines and tramways. The headway are more determined by the transportation offer than the capacity. And we have lower capacity per unit if you have uh, the bus or a train and have only single um, trains and not double or the trains. We have a dense coverage of the catchment area. Sorry. And the strategy is to bundling uh, capacity to keep high speed on trunk lines and branches, enable dense coverage of catchment areas by additional feeder lines, optimizing overall travel times and minimizing operation costs. We have here the example of Munich. We have the so-called Stammstrecke. You see the trunk line in red. It's both a regional railway and a urban rapid transit. In the city, you think it's a metro. Outside, you think it's a regional rail, but we are using the same trains. The catchment area is about 60 kilometers off the city and the headway is depending 10, 20, 40 minutes in the urban uh, area down to two minutes. And you see also the, <clears throat> the branch lines on the outside and the feeder lines. And sometimes the feeder lines are not only railways, they are also metro. You can see behind the metro network of Munich. And it's so such an excess. We have more, nearly a half a million people per day. Um, only in the main station, about a million people on the whole network. It's in an area of about 2.5 million inhabitants. And what's the sense? We are building a new uh, trunk line. We have the, the green one already. And we, we, we started to build the second one. So we integrate the S-Bahn and also regional express trains coming from the bigger cities from about 100 kilometers and more, and also from the airport directly in the city. And we rebuilt the main station to make an interconnection with three metro lines, with the S-Bahn, the old line, the regional long distance trains, trams, and also a long distance bus terminal. A similar system we have in a lot of cities. One remarkable is uh, in Leipzig. You can see here the city of Leipzig and also from Halle. Uh, they have both uh, nearly a million inhabitants and we rebuild the whole network and we substitute two railway terminals and connected it with a tunnel. It's at a length of 3.5 kilometers for stations and nearly 1 billion costs. It's the heart of the S-Bahn network with a lot of lines with a five minute headway so you can come up from outside directly in the city. And outside in the peak, we have uh, some slots to bring in several long distance trains also. And it was provided with the length of uh, the underground station of about <clears throat> uh, 300 meters. And the capacity is uh, restricted because uh, we have uh, no longer decks and so we're thinking about double stack but it was a very long planning time. But also we want to develop train station as urban hubs, like here, it's more in the province, but not far 
from a bigger town to change between buses and trains directly in the best case not to cross <clears throat> the railway if it's possible. But we do it also for, a, for smaller uh, cities like here, direct uh, change from the tram and bus to the rapid transit and also uh, <clears throat> from the rapid transit to the smaller cities from bus, park and ride, bike and ride and we build big uh, park and ride stations. It's not far from the big cities like Düsseldorf and Essen. And so the people can go in both directions to the smaller cities and also to the bigger ones. And the special thing we have introduced, it's introduced in cars. It was introduced in Karlsruhe by the local provider, uh, the tram trains. So you can hear it in Frankfurt main, main station. Um, <clears throat> it was an occasional running, but you can see the intercity trains on the same platform with the tramways. We have, we want, to have a direct connection between the region and the city without changing trains. We have technical and operational targets, transfer rolling stock from open uh, infrastructure to regional, regional infrastructure and vice versa. A tram train is a light rail which can run both on national railway infrastructure and local tram or rapid transit infrastructure. Tram trains are running mainly on the direct current or and alternate current. And some tram trains are running with diesel on railway cars to avoid electrification. In regional areas, we have two, uh, three systems in that case in Germany. And to see what's happening, you see an existing railway network with a lot of locations, with any, not any stations, and passing by very far the city center. The first is to build a new city light rail track that we have done in. Heilbronn in southern Germany, for example. The second one, to use exclusively an older uh, railway with tram trains so they can go from outside directly in the city. We can, uh, build, we can introduce new station or remove stations. Also complementary regional light rail track like we have it here or connecting between regional and local railway networks. We call it so system wechsel change, a transition between the systems. Uh, we have it a lot in Karlsruhe, so you change here from the railway network to the local network. And sometimes the tra trains are running also in mixed traffic. We are running it with TGV, with ICI and freight trains on the same track. And what we have to think about if there's a transition from light rail to railway, you see here the tram is uh, running out of the city and entering <coughs> the federal railway with uh, also high speed trains in the front of um, the main station in Karlsruhe. What we have, the aspect is we have different legal bases between tram and uh, railway. We have talks about the static and dynamic profile of the rolling stock the platform's height and the platform gaps, the transition between the power system, the height of catenary and zigzag of the overhead wire, the type of operation, the operation regulation, the control by signaling or running on site. Signaling and train protection is also a big theme, but we found solutions to get running. And also the radio system must be compatible. And there's also the track guiding, track gauge, wheel and wheel interaction. And we need to also train and qualify the staff for these points. What is the alignment for a tram train? As you see on the left, it's running through a small city outside of Karlsruhe. They rebuild their single track tram and outside in between, like in Heilbronn, we built a railway between the tramway network and the railway network. Behind you can see the uh, railway. And this track in front is also used by freight trains to serve a siding nearby. And also the tramway track behind is electrified with 15,000 kilovolts. And we have the problem with the uh, platforms. There's a low floor uh, tram in Saarbrücken that's near the French border. We have very low uh, 
platforms to 38 centimeters in height and mind the gap and the moving board it's going back and forward uh, to um, eliminate the, ga the gap. In Karlsruhe, we have another problem because of the height, that's the S-Bahn coming from the north and the uh, tram train, they stop at different sections. And so we have a transition section between on the platform. But uh, also the S-Bahn, because they are very long trains, some of the trains are stopping here too. And if you see here, what we have to integrate in all in one system, it's the city in Heilbronn. We have the blue ones, this is, these are the railway line, the federal railway line, that's a private railway line. So we are coming here on the private railway, changing to the, all the 15,000 volts, changing to the federal railway, changing to the, the light rail in the city and also to the north. Here we are sharing also with a freight line and here again with a freight line going to a private and then change again to the federal railways. So we can directly go from Karlsruhe to Heilbronn through the city center going further on to some smaller cities. Also there are the big factories of Audi, uh, you know, and so the people and the staff from Audi can go directly from Karlsruhe to their working place in <clears throat> near Heilbronn. As so a track alignment, so you see what we have done. We are changing here with the <clears throat> freight tracks going to the private and back again to the Federal Railway. And also we need a four, um, four track line to integrate the freight trains. And we are now introducing a new system of about 200 kilometers uh, south of Stuttgart. It's a, re a, a, a regional area with two cities, Schroedling and Tiebing, and they have both about 100,000 people. We uh, developed that project together with PTV, and it's a project of 1.3 billion euro uh, in the next years. We have existing railway lines, we have private railway lines and we are building new tramways here and also here and a connection here. And that's the first step. We changed the a private railway line. We build a new a second track and also introducing uh, new uh, uh, overhead lines to 15,000 volts. And that's the perspective. Uh, these, we made a tender last year to order uh, the new railway stock. It's the same railway stock they are using in Karlsruhe. And also the city of Frankfurt is discussing, it's not only discussing, they uh, in the design phase to make uh, a railway line around, uh, sorry, a tramway line around the city. Um, here's the city, here's the airport, and here they are using the S-Bahn line, building a new tramway line going as a tram through the uh, outskirt of Frankfurt using the tram, uh, the railway tunnel of Frankfurt, again running with the S-Bahn on the same track, running with the long distance train here and going off in a branch only as railway, as tr uh, tram again. And also Deutsche Bahn is doing a lot of other things. They have links to car sharing. It's also to connect uh, the people with the railway to give a, a chance of mobility. And we have also a lot of bike station. Sometimes we are doing it in on the own brand or on the brand of the cities. And so we have a concept um, to <clears throat> integrate or to improve the traffic in the urban areas and also in region areas. There's also a DB. Uh, automatic uh, bus. It's in the outskirts of Munich uh, to connect uh, the this, this small city with the next station. And with the tram trains, we can go across Germany. Here we had been in Bonn three years ago for a special event. And so we run with the tram about 200 kilometers to Germany <clears throat> and changed 
the UN Congress <coughs> uh, at, in Bonn at that time. Thank you very much. Dear colleagues, let's put our hands together for our uh, panels. Thank you very much, Mr. Gunter Koch, and thank you to the interpreter who did very uh, difficult and sophisticated uh, job. Colleagues, are there any questions? So if there are no questions, we'll move forward. I would like to tell you one story which happened in Midwest, in America. I recall that when our colleague from Germany was telling about the process of transportation and integration of railroad and uh, tramway, Midwest, uh, 19th century America, railroads are construction, one of Americans comes to a railroad station, comes to a gen, uh, comes to a, a service and asks, uh, where is the nearest city? The nearest city is six miles away from the station. The passenger looks at him and says, was it possible to construct the station closer to the city? Uh, the serviceman says, if this station is in this uh, city, it would be at the distance of 600 uh, kilometers from this road, which which would be bizarre. Of course, it was the joke. So we get down to the next part of our meeting. Of course, it's uh, crystal clear that such situations uh, we should avoid. Uh, we should use common sense in uh, uh, construction of transportation arteries so that it would not be like in this joke in Middle East in American 19th century. We're talking about regulations, supporting transport regulation and safety of traffic. I would like to give the floor to a member of the Presidium of the Coordination Council for Organization of uh, road traffic, Evgeny Litvin. Dear colleagues, uh, I'm so grateful to be invited. Uh, I'll be a moderator of one of the round table, tables. Uh, uh, traffic safety is a very broad notion or a broad direction of the activity, I think. And I'm also a co-chair of the working group on regulatory guillotine in the sphere of road safety, traffic safety, over those 18 months when this task force or working group is existing, I came to know about many different aspects of road traffic, like training of drivers, and not just drivers, it's about technical supervision and oversight and so on because we are reading through all those documents, all the draft documents and so on. And initially, since the very start, when those task forces were set up, it was envisaged that the group on transport would be in charge of that. But then we became aware that when we are dividing those groups into different modes of transport, uh, it's rather detached. Uh, safety of traffic, is the interdisciplinary, interdepartmental issue. That is why it's extremely uh, difficult uh, to support the safe process, uh, because like we say, a watched uh, roof never boils. Uh, so it's difficult to transform everything because sometimes uh, it's done in a detached way there are different departments in charge of different uh, road objects road sites so they are different oversight bodies charge of rather small chunks of the entire traffic system uh, at least uh, Presently, there are some gaps uh, in regulatory documents when it comes to those indicators and KPIs of the road safety, traffic safety. There is some information, uh, data uh, about uh, the casualties on the road, but not very exact. Uh, and uh, this is a very important transformation which is going on now. 
conventional classical school might say uh, that road safety uh, means uh, environment and man and so on, but actually it's all about people's mobility. This is a new paradigm. So I would like to highlight several important uh, aspects here uh, because now the subject of uh, management is being changing. I mean, we're not uh, speaking about uh, a unit of transport, like public transport unit or a passenger car or whatever. We are talking about uh, ROVs, uh, autonomously operated vehicles, uh, electrical vehicles, and so on. And uh, in St. Petersburg, we had a car accident uh, with uh, uh, ROV, remotely operated vehicle, and pervorized town, uh, remotely operated bus uh, collapsed uh, as well. There should be new amended rules uh, of uh, traffic, uh, new uh, amendments will uh, come up, mindful of remotely operated vehicles and so on, uh, mindful of the principles of regulatory guillotine if the changes were not introduced until the 1st January of this year, then we are not allowed to introduce some changes into those rules. We are supposed to fully revise them this year we'll have to participate in discussions and development of entirely new edition of traffic rules. This is very challenging. Uh, the Minister of the Inter Internal Affairs tries uh, to exclude uh, uh, this uh, transport from the white but it's not possible. Mindful of the changes of the definition of no or notion of the subject of operation, subject of control, and this new paradigm of uh, traffic uh, safety, we should have stronger and powerful control and governance in that. Mindful or the fact that now artificial intelligence is also starting controlling uh, vehicles. It's necessary to resolve very sophisticated mathematical problem of selection of actions in specific situations because the major challenge related to man, a human being as the subject of control of traffic safety. For human beings, comfort is above and more important than the safety. Unfortunately, based on the survey we did, respondents show that uh, uh, they uh, are willing to be comfortable, not safe, jaywalking. It's more comfortable for them to cross the road just by jaywalking than to take extra effort to find the zebra crossing or whatever. Oftentimes it's way more comfortable for people to overspeed because they can do it in the car, step and gas and go. They say it's comfortable. I'm more comfortable that way when I speed. And it's rather difficult. Uh, we should start uh, the education very early for maybe grammar school children, uh, because it's sort of self-destruction, which is deeply embedded subconsciously into human beings as from the standpoint of the object of control. A lot is being done for passive safety and for active safety as well recently, but at the same time, limits, uh, there is no limit of this perfection. It should go further and a lot has done uh, as to human beings, the developers of the uh, national project, the federal project for road safety. They, 
introduced into the parameters, the satisfaction, the parameters such as satisfaction of safety of road traffic. Uh, satisfaction, that means that we'll get this information via public opinion polls. Well, raise your hands, those who are satisfied with the traffic safety in your own region. Yes, there is only one guy who's satisfied with that. That's good. Yes, I can keep asking, but question like that. One of the KPIs, one of the indicators placed into the official document, but uh, we're all humans. Human being will never be fully satisfied, no matter what. Yes, same goes for passenger transport. Passengers may become satisfied. Opinion poll display that, for example, in Olano there, uh, there was the one very good uh, streetcar or a tram and everybody was satisfied. The passengers were satisfied because maximum indicator of uh, traffic safety how is it possible to reach it? In Moscow, the situation is different from the other places, uh, but this is all related to the peculiarities of driving in Moscow. And on um, Cod Road, uh, there is a very high percentage of uh, uh, car accidents and car wrecks. Most of all, uh, traffic safety depends on the condition of mobility environment, entire environment of mobility. Uh, so we are responsible to develop those regulations and norms, uh, and those will be responsible who will implement this all. There are lots of implications and interesting issues I would like to discuss uh, further. First of all, in Russia, uh, there is no explicit methodology on modeling of safety of uh, road traffic. In Finland, one of the institutions comparable to Rosdorni Research Institute, and in Finland, they are under Ministry of Transport, uh, they assess the indicator of this impact. Uh, uh, they embedded it into software product. They do the modeling of traffic safety. They do simulation, like let's say uh, if they place the video surveillance cameras here and there or whatever. And another thing, uh, we, uh, first of all, we should uh, reconsider certain uh, factors. Uh, the experience of some of the federal entities uh, uh, who are doing modeling in the four kinds of con high concentration based on the methodology uh, in highly congested places on the road, uh, between three to six percent of car accidents are there and lots of uh, casualties there based on statistical, uh, so uh, those, but we might see that those concentration uh, or concentration forecasts uh, do not impact greatly uh, the uh, casualties and car accident level. Of course, we should know how to prevent car accidents. For that, we need uh, simulations, event simulation, events in simulation modeling is very uh, sophisticated. It's technological audit, different sociological and psychological factors and so on. It's very difficult to do such kinds uh, of uh, simulation modeling. Uh, but at least we should uh, comply with the normatives, the audit of uh, 
road traffic safety is uh, streamlined and well developed in all the countries it goes without saying that oftentimes uh, different events and activities uh, uh, contradicting uh, the regulations might uh, paradoxically improve the road situation always uh, we uh, should do the experts examination of different situations but we need models and simulations uh, as to federal roads uh, there should be federal audit done by uh, the employees of those uh, federal road agencies and around the world uh, uh, those uh, auditors uh, are liable and responsible for the outcomes uh, of uh, what they do. There are good examples in Germany. In Germany, let's say, prior to functioning of the uh, bridge, uh, they do a lot of testing for bicyclists and uh, motor vehicles. First, they do the testing, then they officially commission this or that object of infrastructure, a motorway or a bridge. Uh, simulations are necessary for us not to experiment on people. Sometimes we can experiment with uh, traffic flows uh, in some regions, uh, some cities, uh, whereby they don't have fully uh, automated uh, systems. Uh, it's partly automated. There are different surveillance cameras and People are proudly saying that we reswitch the cycle of phase and then we change the, the mode of our movement. We have got surveillance cameras so we can get rid of certain traffic congestions. They are experimenting in real time on uh, uh, the or experimenting in real time online with uh, road users but as to uh, traffic safety we should not experiment on road users we should do the simulation we should do modeling for that uh, to be really safe okay i'm about to finish there are two very important things uh, i think we should introduce into the final resolution after our conference uh, that, and I quote what Valentina Matvienka, our the speaker of the State Duma, said that uh, our uh, federal law, uh, this federal law about road safety should be improved. Uh, when there are tenders on informational safety, transport safety, and other types of safety, intend pay attention at quality of uh, quality characteristics, but as to the traffic safety during tenders, uh, uh, they look at the price. So the winning bidder will uh, be the one who offers the cheapest uh, fees for making this or making that. Uh, and uh, if uh, there is the uh, examination of what was done it could be very bad if uh, during the state tender the cheapest bidder will be selected state duma uh, adopt searching uh, reading the law uh, which uh, uh, reverses uh, the uh, mandatory requests when it's capital refurbishment of the road, like the builders build the road and then the operator who is responsible for organization of the traffic out of their own pocket, they should install some extra uh, devices uh, for road traffic control, but that might contradict our law. So we don't know what will happen and where the money will come from to install all those extra uh, devices. It was done on the initiative of uh, Governor of Kursk region, Roman Staravoytov. Uh, originally, it was about buildings, uh, houses, uh, 
first of all, the building should be built. Uh, let's say if the building is built in proximity to motorway, to a road, then some changed into this road. But there are some amendments uh, about traffic and safety. So now the situation is not ideal yet. And we need the resolution of our conference. Uh, here, and we should uh, do that because there are many gaps in our legislation system. There should be no law about traffic uh, uh, safety. There are lots of very contradictory viewpoints about it. Traffic safety is extremely important for all of us. I hope that by joint efforts, uh, We'll stretch up and have very good KPIs and we'll make our roads safe. Thank you. I would like to introduce the moderator of this working session. Ross Derny in intellectual transport systems area. Dear colleagues, we'll continue. I hope everybody is back here after lunch. Public transport within the frameworks of the national projects. Spotlight uh, of all the federal entities of Russian Federation. Uh, there are heated discussions going around passenger transport. So I hope that today also will support uh, this discussion. Uh, I would like to introduce our speakers. They're all, not all here offline with us, some are online. I'll introduce first those who are here with us in this call. First of all, I invite Denis Novohatsky, head of the Project Office on Development of Public Transport of Novokusnetsk town. Part of the Division of Transport Planning of Rosdorny Scientific Research Institute. He is famous for his ardent speeches about passenger transport, the challenges and solutions we can see. Uh, Mr. Parfomov from Tallinn and Vladimir have got all the handout, the handouts, uh, but those who are online, they will see those materials on the website. So our first speaker is Denis Navahatsky, experience of Novokuznets, both sides of the coin of municipal transport reform. I'll start by telling you what we already had. I think you're aware of that story which happened in Novokuznetsk on the 18th of November. We fully substituted and replaced the old road network and we updated our municipal public transport. How did it work before 2020? For your information, Novokuznetsk has got 500,000 uh, of population, and before November 2020, there were 20, uh, uh, there were 82 uh, different routes in the city. A road network, the system of public transport was divided into two parts, uh, 48 routes on regulated tariff and 34 routes on unregulated tariff. In 2019, the volume of transportation was 23 million passengers uh, regulated uh, bus uh, tariff, it was 18 million passengers. Our uh, private, uh, uh, they uh, transported 42 million uh, passengers. Uh, how did our 
transport has worked. The tariff is 20 rubles, rather low for our region. I've got very big amount of different concessions, categories. Uh, out of the budget, 10 trips are paid for concession groups, but it's unlimited uh, number of those time it's unlimited so within one month there are at least 17 free of charge uh, trips for concession group people so all those transport companies were around uh, at a loss because of that uh, as regards unregulated tariff, uh, transporting company the operator was establishing on their own if they embedded all uh, their costs for that and they didn't uh, give any concessions. Uh, everybody had to pay uh, for uh, their ride. Uh, there are two tickets which were handed over transport, two travel tickets. This is the story with two absolutely identical uh, tickets. The other one was uh, just uh, cut off like that. Uh, another one is just a piece of paper cut by scissors and it's very obscure. We don't know who was this transporting company. How can we impact those transporters if they are in the gray zone? 30th April, in those days when the city and the municipality was being prepared for the reform, our transport operators decided uh, Federal Law 220, which allows uh, unregulated tariff based uh, uh, transporting companies uh, not to come up to the line. For three days, they are allowed not to uh, get uh, these uh, vehicles onto the route. Uh, other buses were overcrowded because uh, uh, there were less uh, transportation vehicles because of that. But of, there were uh, some uh, adequate so to put it, uh, route operators uh, who helped us with that. They uh, informed us that there are much less vehicles uh, on route vehicles on the road. And those who work on, on regulated tariff, uh, they figured out that without this fixed route to uh, shadow taxi, they could earn money, earn money. As to the revenues to the budget of the municipality, which were from two transportation companies, were about uh, 110 million rubles. Uh, uh, these are the largest transporting company uh, uh, having more than 1,100 employees. Uh, private transporting companies, it was only 25 million rubles, which went as uh, revenues uh, into the budget of the city. So we understood for ourselves that we should uh, work within uh, federal law 220 those unregulated tariffs shown uh, some of the bad sides uh, as uh, well. And uh, so the principles of the operations of new uh, transport network, we uh, are offering all the concessions uh, to concession group people. We have got more than 30 different concession, concession groups. Uh, uh, not so many people for each concession group, but they are there uh, nonetheless. Uh, we developed a ticket menu and uh, at least interchange uh, and transit uh, parts along the route. Uh, we survey passengers. Oftentimes passengers were complaining on very bad quality of services. They were complaining about inadequate behavior of the drivers on the road and uh, the drivers were very rude. All the obsolete uh, type of car, uh, of a road car or a bus, uh, something what we might call a rattle trap. Transport should be available and affordable for all the passengers. We have got lots of referrals. Uh, 
we have got socialist uh, directed regions. I mean, there are different concession groups, different disabled people, uh, people with impaired eyesight and so on. They wanted for their needs to be taken into account. Uh, and there were some buses who, uh, which were uh, full of advertising, like uh, the outside uh, part of the buses was all in uh, multicolored ads. Uh, but now we developed the uniform style, the uniform image uh, of the outward uh, looking of the uh, rolling stock. Uh, that was very important for us. Uh, transportation companies of the city cannot compete versus private transport companies because uh, all uh, companies uh, have got also doctors, lots of people on the staff. Uh, uh, we were supposed to have about 650 buses, uh, municipal buses on the road, but there were much less, about 400. There are big problems with violation. Oftentimes, our companies, uh, vehicle operators, uh, speed, over speed. Uh, uh, sometimes the passengers were help, happy about that. Uh, because uh, they had uh, to move rapidly to their workplaces and so on. Uh, so the, uh, the, those buses were moving very rapidly and there were very bad cases. It was a big problem. Uh, uh, then we had to redistribute the routes onto the neighboring rooms uh, and uh, there were lots of uh, fixed uh, route shuttle uh, vans uh, and uh, they were way too many sometimes uh, so uh, when we reduced uh, the number of the routes and uh, did other things we understood that it's rather difficult uh, for SMEs in the transport system uh, they very seldom win the official tender but we decided go on with this uh, transport, uh, new transport system, we were going to enhance the efficiency of public transport and the city guarantees that it will uh, do everything to fulfill the needs of the customers and all those transportation company and uh, will do the renewal of the rolling stock. The city developed the documents for transport planning. We developed the program for comprehensive development of uh, transport infrastructure, the document planning of regular passenger transportation and social standards. Uh, for me personally, it was very important. Uh, we decided uh, that uh, the region should not interfere with what we do. So we do not get any extra money, extra subsidies from the region. Everything we do, we do uh, together with the uh, uh, municipal money, with the city's money as well, as to the powers, authorities for the transportation work. Uh, they should belong to the city. They should be in the competence of the city, of the municipality. Uh, so we decided that we should not ask anything from the region. Uh, we wanted to also to do everything right so that uh, the governor would also be helpful. Uh, we had to be very flexible and careful, otherwise we might have not proceeded this transport reform. At the end of the day, we developed municipal program for 10 days down the road for major routes and so on. About stability and uh, transport uh, affordability and availability for the municipalities. We also guaranteed regular renewal of the rolling stock in line with all Russian classification of the fixed assets. And a transportation company will be obliged to renew uh, 
their rolling stock. Otherwise, on uh, year eight or nine, we won't allow them to use their obsolete rolling stock. Uh, and we are fully aware that the tariff, one way or the other, a fair tariff will grow. But the longer we become winning bidders in all those tenders, uh, the more effective and efficient uh, this system will be. By the year 2030, we're sure that the tariff will be changing, uh, but we'll be paying the transportation company on the price the basis the prices of the year 2020. We have absorbed those guarantees when we developed this municipal program and we decided to arrange a new route network and to launch it. 18th of November 2020, those five-year contracts were expiring. The contracts we signed with our uh, transport companies on the sidelines of the countries we had discussions about it. It's very difficult to explain to the uh, transportation company to bring it home that their certificates on unregulated tariffs is expiring. Uh, unless they are automatically rolled over. And that way, it was rather difficult to explain everything to our uh, to those uh, transport companies. Sometimes when the uh, couriers were uh, bringing uh, to the address of transport company the notification that this contract will not be rolled over, they were confronted by Arab the people. People with guns who were saying, no, no, go away. What is this new route network all about? We used to be 39, then we added up two more routes. Passenger flow on the daily basis is 220,000 uh, just daily. That's what we expected. We've taken this as the reference value from the documents on transport planning. Of course, uh, uh, COVID pandemic uh, made some changes, of course. Uh, the overall, uh, the rolling stock, uh, 370 units of new buses in Novokuznetsk town. 150, 164 of large capacity uh, and 51 of very high capacity, but it's necessary to keep in mind, but it's all gas motor uh, fuel. We don't use diesel fuel anymore. Novoskuznetsk is among 12 most uh, polluted cities within the federal project Clean Air. We had to come up with our uh, commitments uh, in line with the federal project, uh, even without the money uh, disbursed from the federal uh, budget. Yet uh, we are going green. It's very good environmental situation. It's uh, much better than it used uh, to be. Uh, we sent our terms of reference to Volgovas company and they amended uh, their cars and there are more, uh, so there are no more gas motor fuel uh, working diesels, uh, I mean, vehicles are produced. Uh, 60 minutes is the time within which the passenger is entitled uh, uh, to use another transport by the same travel car going in the same direction, but not back. We modernized the system of electrical uh, vehicles uh, as well. Uh, six uh, uh, tramway routes. We did increase this number is to trolley buses. We added up one more route, rolling stock uh, on the increased autonomous uh, pitch. Uh, 
and those vehicles are well functioning despite the fact that the neighboring regions are seeing that such uh, vehicles are not to be operated in Siberia because of our harsh climate. But everything works very smoothly. Uh, 1st of September this year, it will be exactly a year since we uh, launched this route. Eight to thousand passengers are transported daily by uh, trolley buses. Uh, we went through 21 tender. After our, our tenders, uh, we received a letter from Federal Antitrust Service that Antitrust, the Federal Antitrust Service maintained that all the lots should be split, that the number of kilometers in each and every lot should correspond to the neighboring lot. It's, uh, well, a very difficult story. Something should be done with it, because if there is a route which is worked on the contract, and uh, the transportation company will do that irrespective of the number of kilometers. Uh, some of the auctions of the tenders were reversed, then we went through it. Once again, there was a contract for one and five years, and there were auctions and tenders uh, uh, done for SMEs. So we were able to provide SMEs with a small part of that. These are from Novokuznetsk, despite the story with takeover operation. Just for your record, we used to have lots of problems and were quite outspoken about it because we knew it was coming. After the replacement of the governor and uh, also there are a local Novokuznetsk uh, transportation companies servicing their routes as well. We transferred buses uh, for uh, gross contracts, 23 billion rubles worth, and there will be 15 billion rubles I will uh, collect from this uh, line. It's Novokuznetsk local companies uh, and to uh, just uh, individual entrepreneurs uh, providing these services. Uh, uh, so it's uh, very good equipment. It's a very good capacity of the transport and all those vehicles are working on regulated tariff. As to our financial model, many cities and towns uh, do the same average cost of one kilometer was about 105 uh, uh, rubles. Uh, uh, annual mileage is almost 24 million kilo, uh, kilometers uh, before it was only 60, 362 new buses tariffs are established by the region. Standard tariff is 20 rubles. Uh, retired people uh, have to pay 10 rubles. Uh, students and school children, 11 rubles per ticket. 11 rubles they pay as a fare. our own procurement of the vehicles, we might scale this up uh, when uh, out of the city budget, uh, we can use this money and uh, purchase new uh, units, uh, uh, new types of uh, vehicles. Uh, wire rolling stored beforehand, it's good because it 2.5 billion, it's the cost for the first year for rolling stock. We had to find more than one, one point, 1.2 billion. Other uh, regions are providing the subsidy, the city with a subsidy about uh, One hundred twenty-five million, uh, and then it's divided based on the transportation company. And there are lots of uh, concessions I retreat who pay nothing or pay with a token, very little amounts of cash. Gap will be would be about six hundred million. That's what we knew since the very start. This is a big problem, of course. Uh, uh, the shortfall of uh, revenues when we uh, 
get onto a new system with validators and contact free cards and so on. Uh, we were minus 252 million less, which were not collected. We are aware that every third passenger is not paying, but also we are, having said that, we are fully aware that there is also another problem related to the fact that some amount of money, one way or the other, is taken up by the driver. It's difficult to combat that. We have got a control revi revision service, and we were making experiments about it. Problem is there. I think that we have this problem. So the shortfall of staff, the shortfall of professional uh, drivers, shortfall of professional engineers, uh, we even did the training uh, from the budget of the city. We trained 20 women uh, drivers who are working on the line now. And we had some failures in the system of payment for the fare, but now it's okay. Mindful of COVID lockdowns at the moment of launching that uh, the uh, factory failed us. Uh, they didn't deliver the rolling stock they were supposed to because they said they shut down during lockdown. Uh, but uh, some other factory uh, helped us with that. Uh, and we have got three new units of vehicle, as the unicles of vehicle uh, working, uh, which is part of the intelligence uh, transport uh, system. One of those being 12 meters Volga gas with new axles uh, and uh, new braking systems. As to the uh, fair system, system of payment, we have both uh, unified the center of organization of passenger competences of automatic system. And we introduced uh, the social travel card as well. Of course, there are complaints, happy about something. and dealing with the complaints and on the daily basis we set a tune this system we just something uh, in the, on the 30th of April our region deputies decided uh, that uh, throughout the May's week all the retired people all the pensioners uh, are would be entitled uh, uh, to free of charge rides. Uh, but it was rather difficult uh, because uh, there is a card uh, placed to the validator and we were to be very exact. Uh, when the money would be charged of the cards of the pensioners and what not, uh, it was a big headache for May Day holidays, national holidays. Uh, as to the dispatching uh, service, it's... Uh, 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 they work seven by 24. Uh, they do all the <coughs> dispatching works. <coughs> they monitor. Online. There is a GLONASS system in place. And online, we can get in touch with the driver if they, we see uh, that the bus is lagging behind uh, or the hardway between the two buses is too long or the driver fell asleep. We might get in touch personally with this driver. Uh, between December and April, uh, 95 or 100 percent of uh, all the passenger vehicles are on the lines uh, up to 97, 99%. We perform everything according to our contract. We work with very high efficiency. We identified almost 300 different violations and breaches uh, uh, by our uh, vendor and we find them. Fine is 100,000 uh, rubles uh, and we extract from the municipal contract and dispatching municipal dispatching service also exercises the control over performance of the municipal orders uh, and we have got 48 inspectors and controllers who daily are on the line they work in two shifts uh, they are grappling with stowaway 
passengers who surreptitiously use the public transport without payment. Uh, of fines for that and they punish they find 30 or 40 such uh, sneaky guys every day those who don't pay for their uh tickets don't pay for their ride in municipal uh, transport but now of course there's the surveillance and as then we might upload this information to the internet if some of such uh, sneaky passengers become aggressive. We plan to have 60 inspectors and controllers, uh, but there is very big uh, personnel turnover. Uh, these uh, people, when they come, will be a very easy and cushy job, but then it turns out that it's rather difficult and challenging. And there is another problem, which is ubiquitous. We included our controllers into administrative commissions so the papers documents and complaints and so on now those controllers and inspectors might ask for personal data from the passenger violating the rules but the passenger uh, such passengers typically are very rude and they don't tell anything Sometimes they even pick fights uh, with the controllers. We have to turn to police. But police has to work uh, very hard uh, to uh, catch traitors on public transport. Uh, there sh should be something, something should be done about it. Like we need transport police because uh, there might be many problems uh, uh, so it would be possible to inscribe this fine right in the spot right away, among other documents. There are 330 buses on the line annually, lots of tenders we arrange. And here are the buses uh, on the line, which you see here. They have got the same image, same appearance. Everything is run smoothly, despite the fact that in very in the very first days of uh, our reform, uh, the uh, private uh, tariff and private uh, transport companies uh, were rebelling. Uh, and they were fighting against they they had their own chat and so on uh they were very indignant that uh there would uh, not be such a thing as an regulated tariff they were writing in the chat uh, let's do it someone might faint right now uh they were fake pass away fake uh, uh people I mean, those were fake uh, flash mobs, uh, and the governor came along and he saw that everything's all right, despite the uh, fake complaints of those uh, transport operators who were unwilling to lose hold of unregulated tariff. But passing were uh, quite hard. And we are fully aware that everything we planned, we did. And now we should shift to the second stage. Now it's 96 uh, street tramways and uh, 46 uh, uh, trolley bus. They should be run smoothly. And uh, uh, we are transport reform. And when I get back home, we'll work even more on this. And we'll be developing uh, the system of uh, electric vehicles, municipal electric vehicles using our tramways and uh, trolley bus, they have got lots of problems with uh, depreciated infrastructure, with uh, uh, depreciated uh, uh, electric vehicles, with depreciated rolling stock. Uh, but we have to proceed with this transport reform. 
So then we'll fully uh, renew it uh, soon. Uh, maybe I was not as brief if, as you wanted because we're tight on the schedule. We're very busy, but uh, I'll take your questions if any. Thank you very much, Denise. Question is rather the recommendation. Fine should not be, let's say, 35,000 of people, thousand of rubles, uh, but higher or whatever, we should do something about the amounts of the fines. Uh, told the region that it's necessary for us uh, to discuss uh, the price of travel tickets. No microphone is used, no sound. I understand your question. Now this reform was made by the head of the city. Uh, we turned down the regional support, regional financial support as well. That was a political decision of the head of the municipality. Uh, better. We work with wonderful experts. I would like to extend my heartfelt thanks. I see some of them here. They did fabulous work because for a long time, period of time, our city was notorious for very bad and obsolete uh, transport system, like there were fires on them or uh, doors uh, of uh, those old vehicles were almost falling apart. Uh, but it's about 1.9, that is the average uh, number of uh, car accidents a day. It was fourfold, but it was not uh, demonstrated broadly because uh, some of those passenger vehicles, especially fixed route uh, shuttle vans were very old. The other, even if it was a small car accident, they might uh, just put back uh, some peeled off paint and everything would be okay. Subsidies, we have got a question. Uh, the subsidies per one resident for one year. Subsidy for concessioner, you mean? Now I have to make a calculations. I can say it right away. We know that the population is 552,000. We know the amount of the contract is 2.3 billion per year. And then we can calculate. There are lots of very interesting and daring decisions and solutions. Uh, uh, sometimes, uh, a uh, very daring when uh, you turn down the help of uh, the region and decided to deal with the city. We knew that the uh, governor is supporting us, and but he's not interfering and he doesn't get in the way. He is like an award, like a referee, like an arbitrator in arbitration court. He decided like if we decided to do everything on our own, uh, he uh, stood aside, but then he came up and saw if everything's all right. Uh, and there are developers and representatives of the regions which planned reforms in the passenger transport. Briefly, what would be your advice to them? Do it rapidly. I'll explain. 
we have got a clear understanding as to how to calculate the initial contract price. It's updated once quarterly, not because of the price of the buses, but because other regions, other municipalities enter, enter this market. And we can see the increase of the uh, payroll, the average wages and salaries of the driver will be growing. Uh, payroll fund will be growing. Uh, the one who will be the last to do the reform uh, will uh, have the most of money to pay for that. We encountered that situation. Some tenders were, uh, the outcomes of some of the tenders were reversed and as the result, uh, uh, same route ended up being much more expensive. Next speaker will be Alexander Igor, Deputy Minister of uh, uh, Municipal Road uh, System and Transport of Chilabinsk region. Uh, good afternoon. Can sure slides and share your screen. It's a shame I was not be able, I was not able to be here offline because we had another meeting today. I'll tell you about our plans. It was very interesting to listen to Denise Mahakov because we have to mark upon this reform. Our city is 2.5 fold larger than uh, Novokuznetsk, it's sprawled out uh, and we'll consider suburban routes, not just uh, urban routes. Uh, divided our work, we uh, passed on the uh, authorities to do that to the level of region. Uh, it's about the route network and we marked up on working on transport infrastructures. Uh, so, uh, I'll concentrate uh, on that. Uh, I'll tell you about the first block. Did it play say, on the motorway on the and in the streets? You can see the city of Chilabins is lagging behind other cities on that. We developed all the necessary documents. We selected the corridors, main corridors of dedicated lanes, uh, assess the uh, velocity of the transport and put together transportation model. We identify in this model the system of dedicated lanes. Uh, this year, there will be a, a 6.7 plus kilometers of no dedicated lanes in 2021. And next year, we'll uh, do more. So we'll go right away, uh, do it uh, gradually. We have got very good tramway system. But one of the problems in Chilabisk is that uh, tramway is not somehow uh, detached in the center. It's not contained. Uh, within the nearest two years down the future, all the tramway rails will be contained. We'll do it gradually. There will be uh, the uh, border uh, stone. There will be also markup, a special markup, uh, which will contain the, and also road signs will contain uh, the tramways, tramway platforms in Chilabins, they are a deplorable state. There are 40 stations, uh, 40 of them uh, show this exit uh, on uh, to the road. Uh, there will platform uh, with signs. Uh, for this year, we plan to have 25 tramway uh, stops and then Radio will update all uh, and renew all of them. Commercial parking lots. Uh, we made the public opinion poll survey. Very big number of respondents We identify major uh, parameters, the optimal parameters for commercial parking lots uh, for the implementation, maybe 30 rubles per one hour or whatever. By summer, maybe we'll make a final decision. Everything possible for this to happen, this system of uh, commercial 
uh, chargeable. structure uh, we reduce the cost of travel card mode uh, and uh, uh, that uh, was very good decision because uh, then those travel cards were sold out like hot cakes uh, Tariffs, we mentioned that as well. It's about uh, control of transportation works. Uh, and also uh, we reduce uh, overlapping works. Uh, and there are 25 main routes mindful of the suburban part. And now not very crowded because there is the redundancy of different vehicles uh, sometimes uh, we don't want uh, this uh, duplication uh, requirements and characteristics uh, of the rolling st uh, stock uh, there are tenders and we should go green we should be environmentally friendly because there is this federal project of clean air which is very important uh, uh, they should be natural gas uh, used as a fuel and uh, convenient transport for disabled people and so on. Uh, development of uh, EVs. Uh, this is very important for us. We have got two projects. Uh, the first project, as you heard, is Metro Tram. part of the region will present this project in full. I'll tell you about trolleybus system. We have analyzed the changes, uh, uh, location, residents, and we see that many neighborhoods, many zones are not uh, covered, uh, are not uh, covered by this. So we rearranged the route system. That way, we will retain our transport system and will increase the volume of transport works uh, by two. Why do we need this transport reform? Here is the flow chart, which is important for all of us. It's uh, overall uh, transportation of passengers by public transport, dotted line, it was 450 million passengers per, per year, and, and now it's uh, increased uh, to 280,000. Uh, uh, there will be dedicated lanes, as I said, and there will be uh, the commercial parking places and will increase the share of electrical vehicles and large capacity uh, buses. Uh, so this is very important dynamics of the changes in our infrastructure. And also I would like to refer to the problems uh, encountered by us and should be they should be decided at the uh, federal level. It's not possible to resolve them at the uh, regional level. First of all, the repair of tramway rails uh, and uh, the construction of tramway platforms, it's the problem because it's not allowed to conduct uh, the air out of this road uh, fund. And the problem is that it's not to repair them using the road fund. And it's also about the procurement of tramway rails uh, and uh, the renewal of the rolling, st uh, rolling stock as to the procurement of tramway uh, rails. This cost uh, is uh, downrated because now the metal out of which the rails are to be made is much more expensive uh, to produce and also renewal of rolling stock on BKD. It's a wonderful, super ambitious project, uh, but there are certain things which could be 
developed further. It's a very about very complex and sophisticated mechanism of selection and screening, and uh, they create a uh, uh, known uh, uh, beforehand. It would be very good if we know about all that, so that we'll kind of compile all the material necessary. And also a shortfall of financing, very frugal financial means, uh, several fold, uh, uh, much more money is needed for renewal of the uh, of the rolling stock. Uh, and also uh, there should be a comprehensive uh, a repair. It's difficult all the tramway systems in Russia. As to the illegal taxi drivers, a lot of uh, migrant, illegal migrant workers are working uh, surreptitiously, illegally, and it's very unsafe. There are different schools. There are no federal norms for that. Scooters sometimes are very aggressive. Uh, they knock down the pedestrians, uh, causing uh, injuries, uh, chargeable parking lots. Uh, as to those commercial parking lots, uh, there is no final draft of methodological recommendations and guide guidelines of Ministry of Transport about the amount of payment for those chargeable commercial parking lots, uh, outdated costs uh, that are state rules uh, and uh, also uh, traffic rules are obsolete and outdated. Uh, and also it's uh, just uh, sometimes not very good uh, breadth uh, of the lanes uh, and so on. Uh, so lots of things should be uh, turned around. We are going to have a full-fledged transport reform. Thank you very much, Alexander. We are to return to the major topic of the presentation. I'll tell you that uh, uh, the problems of different cities and regions are very much alike. Uh, then Vladimir will present us with a ranking on different cities uh, and cities transport systems. Uh, problems are very identical, very similar. We'll uh, keep track of uh, how Chilabinsk is going to implement those wonderful plans into light life. Of course, we support you, but uh, also it's difficult to control, monitor those things. I hope Chilabinsk will avoid the problems. Comment, a federal problems shown in the last slide. Uh, yes, they are quite right and typical for all of us. And we can say a lot about each problem. Probably one seminar is needed for every line of those problems. Uh, and as to the way uh, we started doing the wrong stock renewal, uh, we didn't have the information much beforehand. Uh, it was sort of December 2019 uh, uh, for a uh, round of applications uh, for this tender and de facto we were receiving the documents uh, until the 3rd of March. So it was three months time to sort out the criteria to discuss it. We were going back and forth about it. There were 60 uh, there is in 2021, we, there were same criteria used, but it was in summer 2020. So you didn't work in the region back then. So you are thinking about other deadlines about uh, those uh, tenders, but some regions were saying, we don't need anything. Everything's okay with us. We will not come along to you. We don't need anything from you and so on and so forth. The system of criteria and benchmarks is rather difficult to perceive. So 
we had to explain and now we want to correct and adjust this in order uh, to make it simpler and to demonstrate how exactly we select uh, the IP rates and so on. But we are always very open and give the helping, give a helping hand uh, uh, to uh, bidders. We work with them before we explain what is needed for the selection. A, Vladimir, we would like to show your slides as well. Thank you very much, dear uh, colleagues. Uh, as uh, Ross Dorney Research Institute since 2018 is deeply engaged in all this work on reforms and renewal of the Rolex stock. Uh, but speaking about uh, leasing, uh, and subsidized leasing, we start, it was started and there are no changes in it. I would like to bring up something else about BRD. I'll show you one slide. Uh, there is no new selection, no financial um, activities. Uh, this is about the tasks of the development of passenger uh, transport in the national project. Uh, Dear colleagues, uh, Dorney conducts very big work uh, about uh, all this, and we do the practical work. We develop the documents for transport planning and different researches uh, in order to streamline and improve uh, the operations of public uh, transport. I'll speak about bus rapid transit or BRT. It's deeply rooted into the Soviet times, into the 20th century. It's not just about uh, BRT, but about the ways to arrange uh, this uh, type of transport. To my way of thinking, the time has come when in Russian Federation, many times could use uh, uh, BRT advantages in the current conditions. Let's discuss it despite the fact that this is the way of arrangement of uh, bus uh, commuting, uh, commuting is not quite a custom. Most of those systems are in South America and in Asia, but not only there, of course, they have got their own transport culture. They are accustomed to it while we are not. So it's many things are not obvious for us. Uh, uh, so it's uh, bus rapid transit, it's a dedicated uh, uh, road, and there are even electro buses, uh, uh, priorities and the crossings are arranged by different methods, passenger infrastructure, there are pavilions uh, all for waiting with turnstiles and uh, Metro bus, uh, conventional metro, metro bus is positioned at another module of the transport. It's their brand in the system of uh, bus rapid transit. Uh, the major characteristics of a BRT, there's the aggregation of information on all the similar statistics. Uh, it's difficult to verify and to figure out how rapidly it should be renewed. But you should uh, uh, know that 177 cities are using this BRT system. Uh, different types of BRT. This is a bit misleading because there are different technological decisions for that. In the corridor of bus rapid transit, we saw four lanes. Uh, uh, it's extreme uh, BRT actually. There could be two lanes, there could be three lanes if there is a dedicated lane uh, in the crossing uh, for turning right or turning left. The ways of dedication is possible to contain uh, by borders, by markup, uh, delineators, and so on. It's technological differences uh, which every time should be substantiated rolling stock something very special 
uh, because uh, best abilities are using special rolling stock with doors on the left hand side of the body with high platform. It's high platform like a train, a metro train. Uh, three linked buses, 24 meters long, are used and so on. It's diesel, gas, or electricity uh, source of uh, drug. Uh, Infrastructure and passenger infrastructure is very diverse as well in Russia. Uh, we cannot even imagine bus turnstiles. Uh, uh, passengers pay for the fare before they get on to the bus. So at the entry of the platform, it's another system of payment uh, uh, for the uh, trip. But I'll tell you that there is a document called BRT standard. It's developed by the organization called ITDB, it's international organization, as a document which they develop and update is not binding. It's like advisory document, expert document, which enables to take into account all those uh, specific characteristics and organizational characteristics. So it's possible to classify it on a huge plethora of criteria different things are studied within the system. All the systems uh, are uh, just classified on gold, silver, and bronze. The best ones, most convenient for passengers are ranked as gold. Uh, there's the document for charge in the internet. You can find this information about the system of BRTS to the sphere of application of bus rapid transit. Uh, around the world, there is rather specific system of application of modes of transport. As to South America, we might say that the tradition of a railway has been lost and where they have to construct a metro or tramway, they offer buses and most uh, extreme BRTs, 7 million uh, Bogota, 7 million residents, uh, and they have metro bus, metro bus, but they should have uh, metro. In Europe, it's different uh, uh, because it's rail transport for passenger flows. We are somewhere halfway in between. Rail transport is presented, uh, uh, but not the way it's done in European countries. Uh, many specialists uh, of rail transport uh, are referring to BRT, like uh, you may uh, consult a stream uh, tramway if the passenger uh, flow is in certain numbers, then we don't need BRT. But I say if a tr stream tramway system is available in Russia, of course, we should use it to the maximum, use it most efficiently. Like Mr. Yugorov mentioned, tramway platform or contained, uh, dedicated. Uh, ways and so on. But if there is no tramway system or it's rather, it, it exists, but in a very heterogeneous way, then bus rapid trans transit could be an alternative because their throughput capacity is comparable to tram way. As to Russian situation, it's very important. In South America, they follow the same reason, uh, rationale. Uh, capital costs are not high. BRT vis-a-vis tramway. If there is traffic congestion, uh, very little money, then bus rapid transit will be very helpful. Advantages. Uh, very low capital expenditures because the depth of uh, depth of communications and profile of the tracks is uh, uh, just not very uh, deep. Uh, and uh, in the town like Chelyabinsk, it's possible to dedicate a lane for bus rapid transit, and uh, it's uh, low uh, friction and. Uh, uh, when it's a tramway, uh, but uh, bus rapid transit is uh, most preferable because uh, the traffic should not be congested uh, because they would do the repair on the road, uh, containing and stopping the traffic. Uh, and some part of route should go along special corridor in some in the streets. This is very flexible. 
Uh, so most rapid transit is a very transible, uh, very flexible mode. Unlike other projects, which takes uh, dozens uh, uh, to launch, uh, uh, bus rapid transit could be introduced gradually uh, to offer services to our residents. If we are having intention to do that, we should know everything about bus rapid tram transit. In Istanbul, let's make a comparison. Istanbul is like Moscow in population. They have got one line without ramifications of metro buses. Uh, more than uh, it's almost 800,000 passengers daily. It's like a metro tra tramway could work very high load for bus operational speed is very high. Uh, and uh, this solution uh, could uh, be good for Russia. And uh, they use uh, Mercedes Benz buses. Uh, it's left hand writing. The Turkey cars uh, drive like an hour place, uh, but uh, metro buses the other way around. So on the side of the platform and the breadth is uh, three meters, that uh, is a great case. And it, in Russia, it's very difficult uh, to manufacture uh, these bus by left hand side traffic, but they use diesel fuel. And here are the electric buses. Everybody loves that. In April, very interesting system was opened up as well. Uh, Bayon Tunnel, it's 10 kilometers uh, between them. And uh, there are those futuristic, bizarre looking electric buses. I think it's very, they're very expensive, but the passenger flow is 90,000 passengers monthly. In Istanbul, there are 750. Uh, thousand passengers daily, and in that place, it's uh, thousand passengers per month. A project in Rimini, Italy, and these Belgian trolley buses only came along. They haven't even been certified yet. Same parameters, ten kilometers, twenty-five minutes, good uh, and good uh, speed. Lanes mostly, but sometimes it's one lane, a reverse uh, a traffic uh, by turn. As, uh, it's the limitation of the development. Colleagues from Italy say outright that they would like to increase uh, uh, by 10,000 uh, vehicles uh, uh, daily. They are very ambitious uh, and outspoken. In Italy, they are accustomed to trolley buses in the corridor of uh, bus rapid uh, transit uh, is uh, quite high, convenient cars. Uh, very modern as to the development of contact uh, networks. It's not uh, a bus rapid transit. The lane is not dedicated, but they show wonderful KPIs, wonderful results. Uh, it's Turkey, they are like us in 2015. Uh, they a trolley bus maximum uh, 90 kilometers per hour, uh, but people say it's 70 uh, kilometers per hour on the line. Operational speed is 28.2. That's uh, unbelievable without any dedicated lines. Uh, this is a wonderful speed because the average speed could be 14 or 15 operational speed uh, because of traffic congestion, congestion. So bus rapid transit can provide for high speed, 24 meter trolley bus. There will be uh, two chain buses uh, in Russia, Belgorod. Colleagues from Belgorod uh, couldn't make it here. They're not participating in our Uh, in uh, we implemented the project of the dedicated lanes on uh, a short line. A micro model was made in uh, MSM and 
part of short uh, town was referred uh, for short street uh, street was refurbished uh, lots of different things were uh, done it was uh, renewed everything was simulated and modeled uh, under the date about intensity of traffic in different uh, parts a micro model was developed uh, uh, so uh, the bus rapid transit can go very fast as to the matrix of correspondence there are some variants of transit which are not quite advantageous but when it's a moment from the region to the center the speed almost didn't change but the maximum speed slumped the residents were right in uh, driving at uh, uh, 80 kilometers per hour, then uh, halfway through in the middle of the street, they were stuck. Belgrade is a small town. They say they don't need dedicated lines, but nonetheless, they do need them as well. Uh, they are inspired uh, by uh, some very interesting uh, solutions for example when it's not possible to uh, manufacture a street or a tramway we should think about uh, uh, such uh, options our belgrade colleagues did that work and here you can see that there is a dedicated line along the axis uh, stop platform uh, pedestrian crossing with the traffic light and then uh, the there is the ramification at the crossing there are lots of lanes uh, crossings there are more than two lanes such uh, solutions as well but it's not our project we participated in micro modeling part of the work uh, hope that in future some other cities will also follow this experience as to russian situation and this is the uh, photo from belgrade as well i reiterate tramways i am not seeing that uh, brt should fully oust uh, fully replace the tramways theoretically it's possible but uh, I think we should make calculations every time uh, to compare uh, different technical solutions of different transport modes. Uh, biased against those things. Another important factor, passenger flows, tramway and metro passenger flows or in two cities mostly there is Samara in Ekaterinburg whereby there are lots of tramways but we know how metro buses work in South America for example they should not be ousted though I mean substituted but mostly uh, metro bus can uh, transport passenger, big passenger flows without specialized infrastructure solutions uh, as uh, we should go green this is environment agenda and our president also bring this up <clears throat> we should be carbon neutral we should uh, uh, reduce uh, emissions into atmosphere so we can use the contact networks uh, contact grids of trolley buses <clears throat> and substations uh, because in BR contact grids are not interfering with anything uh, it's cheap it's easy to mount and it's zero emissions uh, <clears throat> it should be our russian gimmick uh, metro buses on electrical drug uh, about it uh, BRT infrastructure should be paid out at the expense of road funds uh, road funds should include the tramway infrastructure it takes some time but if it happens uh, uh, yet uh, there will be expenditures uh, and uh, money will uh, be spent for rails uh, as for construction as well but here it's about the way that a big part of the cost for the infrastructure of um, BRT uh, could be paid uh, from those uh, 
road uh, funds. Uh, Belgrade uh, in short uh, street, uh, there will be dedicated lanes in future as well. And another question, cities mindful of big difficulties in perspective planning of budgets and forecasting uh, when annually you introduce it with a small section of bus rapid transit that would improve our residents' lives. As to Metrobus and Kazan, Rose Dorney Research Institute, together with the colleagues, uh, finalized the concept for Metrobuses for the city of Kazan. Of course, first it was terms of reference, it was the development of potential variants, uh, variants of the routes. Uh, priority. Metro buses, uh, or another option might be another branch of the metro. It was difficult to discuss metro buses, of course, uh, because it was necessary to do the calculations of the costs for the implementation of those things. Uh, so that was the list of all the activities it was adopted. And uh, the routes were selected as Metrobus was to be uh, cheap. So they used the road network and it was the uh, conventional uh, bus coupled buses, uh, uh, no turnstiles, uh, payment inside the bus. And also uh, the large uh, transport interchange uh, uh, hub identified, but it's sometimes difficult to use the uh, streets, which are uh, there two lanes only, but this uh, uh, zone is almost on the border between the city and the Republic. It's a rapidly growing neighborhood houses for low-income groups and for concession groups. Uh, and of course, the, they'll need the transport. The metro bus is a very way number one, which was uh, suggested. Uh, and uh, the other ones uh, are the uniform uh, system of uh, transport interchange hub. It's only 5 million, the cost would be, of course, it will be assessed further, but for municipal budget, this is quite affordable. As to the plans of electrification, we offered, uh, uh, these are the deferred costs, of course. Uh, branding for microbuses, uh, they stand out visually that attractive characteristics uh, would be immediately noticed by the passengers. Uh, dear colleagues, we're very busy on the agenda. If you, there are questions, I'll take them. Thank you very much, Vladimir. Very interesting. There is a question from the attendees. Uh, is Rosdorni uh, going to prepare some methodological recommendations uh, on uh, bus rapid transit uh, so that uh, metropolitan areas would not make uh, mistakes? Yes, we plan to do that job next year very important from the standpoint of international experience as well, because there are different incentives, motivations, and reasoning for decision-making. All those buses with tiny uh, passenger flows and huge passenger flows in Istanbul, some things are incomparable. We studied the situation. The answer is yes, Rosdorni Research Institute will prepare methodological recommendations for dissemination of best practices on bus rapid transit. Uh, the others would make less mistakes about it. 
question. We have a rowing mic. No microphone. I think we can discuss it one on one on the sidelines of the conference, not procrastinating. Inspectors and controllers, or oh, the passengers paying the fare on the bus, we included them into special commissions. Uh, there are some people who never pay their fare. They are very adamant about it. They just don't want to pay, and that's it, period. There is one lady who never pays and twice she was taken off from the bus and when the inspectors would come up to get her away from the bus, she was uh, flopping on the floor going hysteric. But typical when people saw a controller and the inspector, they are going to pay and uh, the sh passengers should be fearful of those uh, inspectors who should be very stern and might uh, make out fine for them. Because the fare should be paid uh, at the moment when the passenger boarded uh, the transport vehicle. Uh, not when they are caught red-handed and paid by the controller. And then we record this uh, and everything is recorded on the camera. And uh, when uh, this uh, unwilling to pay uh, passenger uh, is very resentful saying, I'm not going to pay. And we tell them that they are on the camera and then we'll deploy that in the internet. Regional deputies are discussing that. I've got regional set of rules uh, with different articles and fines. Uh, it's uh, in the code of mis administrative misdemeanor and the administrative commission controls work by tools. They can make a decision that this is the administrative misdemeanor at the regional level. This is the perpetrator of the tort visa and our inspectors just uh, uh, stop the bus, shut the doors and say, we call the police. You don't provide us with your personal data. We don't know who you are. We are calling the police. In that case, passengers are to pay. Uh, they are obliged to pay even if they are stowaways. Uh, and they are either I uh, just uh, bid to go away from the bus, even not paying uh, its uh, public reprimand uh, because other passengers are become outrageous. Other passengers uh, get very angry and resentful about those people who are not will who are not going to pay. And it's public reprimand. There are some uh, passengers who uh, don't pay for some reason and they're very adamant. They say, I'll never pay you, period. And some are just piggybacking, saying, No controller, no, no one will know that I did pay. I'll 
uh, get away with that. But one way or the other, we calculated the losses, municipal losses, uh, are 39 million rubles from those non-payments and the cost of those uh, uh, stewards, bus stewards are 40 million rubles. Deputies in the region made uh, the decision and then there was the commission decided such things. We have got changes in the program. Some could participate, some couldn't. And I suggest uh, we will introduce Scientific Research Institute of Automobile Transport in Kursk region. Uh, the city is on the verge of reforms in passenger transport, municipal passenger transport, but would like to have some kind of a public compromise. Tatiana Mihaeva. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, all the participants. Uh, very interesting uh, conference we have with lots of very useful things and adamant things, maybe quite candid, pleasant and unpleasant, but I'll tell you about our experience. Uh, we are the Scientific Research Institute of Automobile Transport. We work in Kursk region and in Kursk uh, metropolitan area, and we pinpointed some problems and difficulties. Uh, I think that we just are behind our agenda. So I'll be very brief telling you what we encountered, what we would like to avoid in future for all of us. First of all, I would like to thank my colleagues. In the previous session as well, a lot was said about data, but the principle of GIGO, Garbage in, garbage out is very important. At the stage of survey and uh, study, uh, what to collect, how to collect, uh, what do we do uh, to uh, make our calculations and studies, uh, but then they could be quite wrongful, erroneous model based on what we studied. Uh, because different cities show different diverse number of trips. Sometimes it goes quite bizarre and is fraught with conflicts. If we do the surveys, uh, let's do uh, it in a good way. How did we do that? Uh, we uh, did the following. We were doing our studies uh, in weekdays and weekends as well. And we checked up passenger flows, intensity and so on. The only challenge is COVID, the pandemic. It's a great challenge, uh, but we were just lucky. There were surveys done in 2019 so we had some reference or benchmark to look at. Uh, but today uh, we mentioned 15 or 20 percent. I don't know how relevant it is. I would say it's rather 30 or even more because as we don't know uh, to what degree the data was correct in the previous survey. Uh, a transportation company on unregulated tariffs uh, were bidding uh, the counters away. They didn't want the survey, they didn't want the study, they didn't want to be pinpointed and caught red handed, so to put it. But we were fighting for truth. Don't be fearful of that. Uh, we should do the cleanup work. Uh, and of course, then it will be simulation and we use the data, we made some conclusions and very briefly, I'll tell you about the root network, the root network of metropolitan area of the city of Kursk, uh, like in most Russian uh, cities, uh, 
uh, first they had very good uh, road network which was paid on trunk routes on electrical uh, vehicles uh, uh, but uh, it was quite clear the matrix of correspondence and everything uh, now two thirds of roads in Kursk is serviced based on unregulated tariff. I will not tell you why, but first of all, it's budget limitations. But that means duplication of the roads, low quality, very small inferior vehicles, so public transport is not competitive. Passenger flows are dropping. Most important, within this duplication, which was identified, we suggested for the carcass, uh, the, so it's rather a typical story, but uh, there are contradictions uh, between uh, the transportation company and local residents. Uh, like the resident says, it used to take me uh, half an hour to get from point A to point B, and now I have uh, to make a change for another bus, you made it worse. Uh, so it's not just uh, calculation. Uh, the calculation should be useful for the would-be model and for the would-be reform, uh, because uh, there should be awareness raising for the local residents about the reform. Uh, like uh, it uh, should not be like uh, public outrage when you, they say, "How come you made this reform, but you never informed us before?" about awareness raising uh, but also why should we change uh, it's quite obvious uh, seemingly i trust that you colleagues uh, come along to do everything wrong uh, like everything was okay now for you taxpayers' money will spoil everything. Well, of course, no, we don't think that. We would like uh, to uh, develop everything in the best possible way. Of course, resources are very limited. Some people are, many people are skeptical about presentations like mine at the conferences, like we should do everything right and so on, <laughs> like gross contracts and so on. But then on the sidelines of such conferences, they discuss where should money come from? There should be awareness raising and educational work for decision makers uh, and also for all the stakeholders. Lots of I would like to discuss, but no time for that. Thank you, Tatiana. Most of the Russian cities uh, may uh, say that this is the situation like yours, uh, but you should make some steps. You should put together some efforts uh, to change something like those people in Novokuznets did and develop everything in the best possible way, like Tatiana mentioned. Thank you. By uh, the uh, fare, the rides and public transport are free of charge. Uh, as to European experience, Grigory Parfonov from Tallinn administration will tell us about their experience. Grigory, can you hear us? and write about that reform and transport reform. Oftentimes, mistakes are discussed, uh, but we need first-hand information. Grigori, we cannot hear you. Grigori? 
Can you hear me now? Do you see my screen? This is very bad because I see my presentation and I share my screen. But we see that's bad. How about? We still see only you. Can you see it now? I'll tell you when slides are showing up. I have got the slides. Here are the slides. Thank the Association of Traffic Engineers for this wonderful annual event for books published uh, and they are lying on my table and I'm sharing it with my colleagues. I would like to thank Ross Dorney. Thailand is not part of a project, but all those problems we encounter, you encounter in Russian cities, uh, we met them past. Well, of course, uh, our transportation tariffs are much less aggressive than what you say about the Russian ones. I've got a small uh, population. Uh, it used to be 415,000 when the system of free of charge transport was introduced. Plus, uh, the city budget is small for European standards for the cities, about 800 out of that sum going into the public transport. As to the public transport, we have got one transportation company which belongs to the city. Uh, as to the rolling stock, uh, when uh, we introduced the system of free of charge uh, public transport, uh, there was the growth of rogue stock, five uh, tramways, 48 buses. Uh, this number was reduced due to some reasons, which was also related to introduction of free of charge public transport. And we have got 540 buses. Uh, uh, the number of uh, trolley buses was reduced commonplace and mundane situation. When there was the fair for the ride, there was financial regulator, there were express routes, uh, uh, they costed slightly higher than as one in trolley bus. Trolley bus was stopping at every stop. But then when everything became free of charge, passengers uh, decided to massively use express bus buses became less popular. Contemplate the prospects for development of bus system in the future. As to our budget, the budget for public transport grew despite the fact that it's a free of charge public transport. It might seem that this budget is devastatingly high, but it should be said but that our prices are different. Bus driver receives by 20% more than the average salary. It's about 180,000 rubles monthly. Five to three euro per uh, kilometer. It's the uh, we uh, drifted uh, as far back as 1990s to gross contracts. Uh, tariff is uh, renewed annually for the future. 
coefficient and we revise the coefficient, uh, which includes cost of fuel, uh, payroll, uh, the cost of life, the consumer index, uh, also life for consumers. Uh, that's how our tariff is put together. Meanwhile, as we renew the rolling stock over this uh, time period, we fully updated bus. And servicing uh, that way we saved a lot of money. And as the result, Effective. Same goes for tramway depot. While we also have our own workshop for upholstery. And we tested four different types of electro buses. Uh, out in our roots for several months to uh, Tong and Man. Our tramway line goes to airport, all the way up to the airport. There are very few cities of the world having public kind which integrates the entire system of transportation of the city with the airport. and our the uh, ability of this branch uh, to to connect the or passenger port uh, Tallinn is passenger port and here is our retro tramway QT4 Skoda trolley bus and uh, all the ECs will refurbish it as well. Re these retro vehicles, of course, it's a whim, but we'll send them to the roots. Uh, and that will enhance the emotions of our uh, residents from using passenger transport. And there are different factors of city mobility, which is very necessary to take into account uh, passenger transportation, time, transport, uh, no very long traffic congestions uh, for a uh, bus, and in transition for free of charge uh, public transport, we also uh, did a lot for a prioritization for bus movement. We have got uh, dedicated the contained uh, tr tram lines and will increase their speed. Uh, as to dedicated lanes, it's a very special story lies the city, 470 cars per 1,000 of population. When we introduced the system of prioritization of public transport, it was all in a chaos, lots of people discontent. But several years after we did that all, uh, I cannot even imagine how we uh, used to live in the past without those dedicated lanes. The quality of services of public transport is very important. We quality of service we offer reliability, robustness. Have got very low percent of non appearance in the route because we always have 10% of backup uh, vehicles. Let's see if a bus uh, got in a, uh, an accident or whatever, we can replace it. And our rolling stock is in a good condition. Make our infrastructure more dense. 
we don't sprawl with it, but we make it more ramified. We add some passenger corridors for public transport as well to develop this network and uh, the issue of the pavilions. Uh, bus shelters, uh, last year we had the tender and this year there will be a new uh, pavilions, uh, oh, bus shelters. Uh, how does, did this all start? All this story was free of charge public transport that in Novokuznetsk every third passenger doesn't pay their fare for a ride. Created and assessed all uh, pros and cons. Uh, well, pros and cons, uh, and uh, we looked at our concessioner groups. Uh, what should be invested in order to make it? Decided that we can afford it and allow it for my, ourselves, and this would be a very good incentive for people to use public transport. Uh, uh, we made uh, the labor market much closer for the passengers. Very good, combated social inequality in the city. Had referendum in 2012, and 75% of those who voted, they voted in favor of this initiative. Skeptical minds, because users mostly were fearful that won't be able to render good services for our rolling stock. Um, so, and that one way or the other, so it's a uh, different social outdrops, asocial people, people with deviant behavior will be using it and they'll turn very nice and cozy and beautiful buses into something nondescript. Uh, but all those fears subsided. And by the way, we have got one of the most state-of-the-art rolling stocks, uh, even among other European countries. Uh, how did it impact us? Uh, uh, beginning from 2013, when free of charge public transport was introduced, uh, there was an increased amount of passengers using uh, uh, the, the public transport by 6.7%, and then it somehow stabilized. The population of the city was growing, but not uh, by very uh, big amounts. And free of charge transport is uh, for the residents of the city only. thousand of uh, uh, re local residents officially registered. Before that, they were in the gray zone not paying taxes, but when they understood that they would be able to use this future transport only if they are officially registered here in the city, and they did that, and they started paying taxes to the Those figures are not over impressive, maybe. Now, disabled people, uh, seniors above 65 years of age, uh, and uh, recovery workers from Chelyabinsk uh, nuclear power plant. Uh, before the implementation of the system, we uh, had uh, 18 uh, euro worth uh, monthly travel card. Uh, One of the adverse uh, sides of public transport, as soon as you give something for free to people, on the one hand, Trump, uh, to validate the card, if they board the bus, they say, why should I uh, um, 
paste my card to the validator when the uh, ticket is uh, free of charge. And that way we lost a lot of data, but then we replenished it by another method. Now we purchase and procure all the equipment and all the buses with infrared uh, uh, cards, equipment and sensors, and we continuously receive the information about the number of passengers and other things. This is important from the uh, standpoint of routing, which is very positive. Plus, we have got very high percent of non-validation, up to 40 percent in many uh, zones. It's hard to combat that. Factors on the line, we have the same story. As soon as passengers see controllers, immediately as a rush to validators validating tickets, we try to create mechanisms of disconnecting validators at the moment of control, but nonetheless, the problem is still there. As regards uh, people's perceptions of the quality of passenger moment of uh, launching the system of free of charge, uh, well, that less than 50% of the local residents positively assess the system of public transportation. Gradually, with the renewal of rolling stock, people started perceiving this public transport differently. And now about 80% year in, year out support and highly appreciate public transport. Average uh, life cycle and average age of rolling stock, we embarked upon uh, its renewal. A more aged, so to put it, more appreciate in uh, arson gas motor fuel. As to the trailways, there are no three section. Uh, old uh, tram looks like the one which uh, has for more than value very much the external appearance of the uh, tram although there are some complaints that uh, it's difficult for women to go up the steps to rise the high, especially for women with children and prams. Uh, alternately, not only those uh, trams are moving back and forth along those lines, but also uh, the next tram in this headway will arrive uh, in another appearance and there will be a low step, low platform to get on low floor. Uh, so everything should be done in the right way, way for low mobility passenger. If you do something for them, it will be equally comfortable for other passengers as well. As to the load of uh, the average daily loads in the city, in the thanks bus lanes uh, traffic uh, loads and traffic congestions it's almost in the same level as it used to be in 2014 to ticket system first uh, it was this online account green card uh, my fair classic uh, Now we can see that we have got uh, 
one and the same card for the entire country, no matter which uh, in which city you board the uh, bus, uh, you can use it in Pardno, in Tartu, or if you are going fishing uh, to the islands, to Sajim and other lines, you may use those cards as well. And it's possible to use this card for uh, paying uh, of, on the train, for the fare on the train. It's like electronic purse as the result of it. Uh, quite uh, right to use the figures of 2019 due to the pandemic. We uh, just reversed the validation uh, during that time. Passenger flows were reduced due to lockdowns. Uh, passenger flow. Now we can say that uh, our city, which has got 440,000 active green cards regularly used it as a minimum at least once monthly uh, each card is validated altogether it provides us with seven million validations monthly which is quite good for our city to say our read not work is constantly updating our city is rather small but nonetheless, uh, some people have got uh, three uh, changes of the transport uh, mode. Our transport system is very convenient. You can use one bus to one uh, zone uh, to uh, another zone in the other side of the city. We have got the feeder electrical uh, shuttle uh, train. We fully renewed the rolling stock of electrical shuttle train. We've purchased those uh, carrots, like we call them. And we agreed with the company feeder electrical shuttle train uh, that residents of Tallinn inside this zone, uh, there will be free of charge uh, a trip. Uh, and since 2013, it's the way it is. Uh, and uh, we may say uh, that we can see a drastic uh, growth of the number of commuters using electrical toll train. It's a city shuttle train. Uh, this is a very positive experience. Uh, and we also praise was not finished by the speaker. And all, it's a big metropolitan area. And we also take into account those who live in the suburban area and they ride the cars. Uh, uh, so in each exit from uh, city to city at the distance of five or six kilometers from uh, uh, the city center, we have got park and ride uh, uh, systems. Uh, uh, it's commercial parking, but you come along with your green card validated uh, and by the same green card you pay for your trip in the bus, you are entitled to a free public transport and then you don't have to pay for the parking. This system of park and ride is very good and very useful and very popular as way as well. Heard a lot of skeptical remarks about free of charge Estonian transport in Russian mass media, but our municipal budget is tiny. That is why we calculated everything very thoroughly before embarking upon something whatsoever. Our experience is quite uh, effective and attractive, and uh, Matic was uh, disseminated around the entire Estonia last year. Uh, 13 million euro was uh, extended uh, uh, for each uh, uh, province of uh, our country, for each county. And uh, that was 
such uh, trips uh, on municipal transport in different counties. Uh, is the uh, lump in the amount of those who use this free of charge public transport system. But this is a high quality system. Thank you for your attention. St. Petersburg and Tallinn are not far away. Other, and it's hard to find St. Petersburg resident who never visited our city. And by the same token, it's hard to find the Tallinn resident who never ever visited St. Petersburg. And we are hopeful uh, that as soon as all those lockdowns are fully lifted after the pandemic, uh, we'll uh, be making reciprocative trips. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. How did you assess satisfaction of population by public transport? And secondly, uh, are there any questions about uh, trolley buses? Uh, on an annual basis, we uh, do public opinion polls uh, on uh, residents' assessment of different uh, services. We outreach the population. Tallinn passengers are most demanding. If they don't like something, they'll go berserk and they'll pile you up with complaints and uh, requests to change different things. So we tested different options of electro buses uh, and the future, you know, of course, we'll uh, have uh, uh, this. Uh, also, we don't forget about uh, trolley buses because electro bus cannot fully replace uh, trolley buses, it's more tried to, to infrastructure than trolley bus itself. Passenger kilometers on trolley bus, quite cheap. Uh, there could be dynamic. There is a contact grid there. So it will be possible to uh, charge and at the entry to the city, uh, the trolley bus will uh, down its wires uh, and will uh, drive uh, on this electrical battery, which was charged from the grid before they enter the city. Thank you. Very interesting. Thank you very much. I have got one more change in the program. Now there will be a presentation of the book of uh, Association of traffic engineers, methods and procedures of intelligent data analysis and transport uh, planning. Swen Martin Mason, a representative of the Scientific Research Association of Transport in Germany, and Anton Chinkasi will be given the floor. Well, this is uh, quite unexpected, but very pleasant indeed that we were announced now. Wonderful book. Uh, Thanks to Dr. Sven Martin Nielsen, uh, who is also uh, here with us. Uh, and uh, Sven Martin Nielsen will introduce this book on his own behalf because, in most part, it's uh, the fruit of his own personal work. Sven Martin, floor is yours. Unmute your mic, please. Yes. 
So I hope that you can hear me. Okay, fine. So Dobri Dien, Dami Gospada. Um, I'm not uh, very near to you. This is about 1,700 1, kilometers away from uh, uh, St. Petersburg. And um, well, I'm uh, very pleased to be here on this uh, screen with you. Um, and uh, this is a third invitation to your um, uh, annual conference and workshop. Um, I've been in St. Petersburg in 2016 and in 2019, and I'm very uh, glad to be here again. So let's see what we I, can you. I would like to switch to my presentation. Okay. Unfortunately, we don't yet, yet see the presentation. Okay. Do I have to unlock the presentation or do you switch it off for me? Well, try to do that because there are two things here. I guess technicians will be able to help you to share the screen. Yes. Dr. Nelson, yes, we see your screen. Yes, please proceed. We see your screen. Thank you. Okay. So, um, um, dear Mr. Sankaya CCF and uh, dear sir and madam, I'm very pleased to be here with you today. And I hope that you can see and hear me and see my presentation um, as well. I can see it right now. So um, before I um, switch over to the book, I would like to say something about our um, Road and Transportation Research, Research Association um, um, and what we do, what we did in the um, uh, um, past. Uh, but first of all, best regards and greetings um, from uh, the FGC from our association and to the participants of the sixth annual international workshop and conference transport planning and modeling. And as we know that Russia as well as Germany and other countries go through hard times at the moment, we hope that all of you and your families are well and stay well. We wish you all the best and well, let's see, um, um, looking forward to the next visit to the beautiful town of St. Petersburg. So the structure of my little presentation here, uh, um, short introduction of our FGSV of our association and its role, um, short, um, well, short presentation of the challenges and impacts due to the COVID-19 we go through at the moment and well, our technical standards and the working uh, paper and the translation Mr. Tankatsev talked about. So um, the German Road and Transport uh, Research Association is a non-profit organization with a technical scientific focus. Uh, we were founded in 1924, though we are nearly 100 years old and we call ourselves the most important knowledge resource center of the road and transportation sector in Germany. And we're working together with the German Ministry of Transport and the Federal Highway Research Institute. Our office is uh, located in Cologne, in North Rhine-Westphalia, near the bus and the German uh, Transportation uh, Ministry of Transportation. 
And there's an office in Berlin. It's uh, still under renovation at the moment. And uh, hopefully we will um, have um, any, um, well, say conferences there at the end of 2021. So um, this is our headquarter in Cologne on the first floor uh, situated near the River Rhine. So our fields of work, are of course, the research, this is the organization of research programs, technical standards and specifications, uh, as well as English translations. There are about 10 till 15 English translations now. There um, is an um, information and documentation center. Um, we have our knowledge transfer, um, some international cooperation with the neighboring countries, but also with Russia and China and other countries. So 2,500 people, experts, working in working groups, committees um, on, um, on a free basis, uh, working on those standards. So what um, happened to us during the last two years to uh, during 2020 and 21, um, well, many meetings were canceled uh, or postponed. Uh, I think you have uh, uh, gone through this uh, same situation, but there were no change in memberships. Um, there were conferences that uh, could take place last year, but there were conferences that had to, uh, to be postponed. Uh, now in 2021, we are in a year between the big Congress of the EFGSV and uh, we already had four conferences uh, which took place online uh, with, with up to 500 participants uh, during this year. So um, we are also a member of the World Road Association PIAC or um, uh, IPCR it's called, uh, also called but um, as you might know, there are no activities so far in 2020 and 2021. So there are working group meetings, no, mostly online, mostly organized by our office. And we're using the program GoToMeeting uh, to um, connect all the people, to, to connect the experts. And uh, since uh, last year, since, since spring and summer, we, the working groups, uh, they meet, uh, the meetings are shorter, but more often and well, there's less discussion possible as you might also know. Uh, but well, there is no change in working at technical standards. We are still working and working on our technical standards for the German road and um, um, transportation sector. Well, there's some delay in research, but it's uh, well due to restrictions. So our publications in uh, Germany, we have uh, four um, step. Um, we have four steps in our publications. There are um, the R types that uh, has something to do with um, the German word regulation. Right? So starting with an R. We have the technical standards and specifications. We have um, R2 type, those um, 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 recommendations and uh, information sheets, um, well, as well with, with the W types. These are knowledge documents, well, starting with a W for the German word um, a business document. So there is a W1 type and a W2 type as well uh, with working papers. So and we have some English translations as I already told you and uh, three Russian uh, translations made by the ATI during the last two years. Um, and a few um, um, can use this document, uh, this um, presentation later, you can uh, switch on to this uh, link uh, from our publishing house, if you if you go onto this link, you will let's see if it works. No, it doesn't work. Oh, here it is. You will uh, directly switch to uh, our publishing house, and there is this website with English um, standards 
tra translated into English and free to download uh, for yourself. Um, there are some uh, directives, and directives and guidelines for the design of roads as well as the constructions of roads. So, well, back to the presentation and back uh, to what we do. Well, let's say um, during the last year we had uh, we created 20 technical standards and 10 knowledge documents and uh, now over to the book. Um, the new book, the new translation, what, which was made possible by ATI into the Russian language. So we already um, worked together with the recommendations for the implementation of mobility management um, last year. This is the R2 document and we made, um, well, I made a presentation two years ago in St. Petersburg in April uh, about those um, mobility management recommendations. So also we made possible uh, um, with together with the ATI um, uh, translation of the quality requirements for video detection systems for traffic observation. And now I would like to, well, uh, in a very short time, talk about uh, the newest um, translation, the data mining methods and procedures in transport planning and traffic management. Um, well, of course, there's an introduction. What is the data mining? Uh, what are the claims, the limits, the target groups of this uh, working paper? Um, what are the applications in the transport, se uh, transport sector? Um, you can see um, applications in transport planning, transport management, building, uh, building knowledge. Well, this is the, the, the third part um, is about elements and procedures of data mining. Um, I can show you, well, there's some interesting, uh, there's some, um, well, a list of interesting literature in uh, German and uh, mostly in English uh, language. And um, of course, there are, I'm sorry, there are some appendices uh, with, um, yes, with uh, some um, um, algorithms and clusters, some, uh, um, yes, okay. So um, I will, let's go back to the third. And for me, it's this very um, important um, this, uh, segment this, uh, or, or chapter about the elements and procedures of data mining. Um, um, you can find uh, work, um, knowledge about workplace preparations and tools. Um, um, you find a way into the exploratory approach to the data. Um, so you have some tools to simplify and reduce your data uh, and to, to identify the key features for your, for your data. Um, you have some uh, words about checking and describing interrelationships for um, regressions and associations. There are five proce procedures and um, you have a list of uh, uh, guidance to structure data sets uh, we are classifying and clustering. So um, uh, I hope this book, this new book, this new translation is um, 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 published already and can, um, well, can, can uh, given to you or bought by you. And uh, this way, I would like to thank you for your attention and good luck for the uh, conference and the best wishes for the rest of 2021. And I'm hoping forward to visit uh, the next conference and well, to um, make a new um, translation possible. Thank you. Thanks a lot, distinguished Dr. Sven Martin Nielsen. I'm here to remind you that we present a book which is, is, is part of your handout materials for every one of you. This book is entitled Methods and Procedures of Intelligent Data Analysis and Transport Planning. It consists of two parts and it's the 
result of translation of two working papers developed uh, in the working group of uh, uh, FGSV and uh, the chair and the representative of this uh, FGSV is Dr. Uh, Sven Martin Nelson. There are two divisions, two parts in this book. Uh, uh, one regards technology and technique of the quality of video surveillance and video detection and a video recorded requirements, uh, different requirements for that second part tackles upon intelligence data analysis and transport planning and uh, road traffic, road traffic uh, uh, control, uh, uh, the short-term forecast data management for transport engineers who are advanced in practice having hands-on experience. This book will be of great practical interest. Uh, maybe you should provide us with a feedback to assess the quality of this wonderful uh, book if you immerse into it professionally. So we introduce the book and I return the microphone to the moderator of the session to you, Katerina. Uh, floor is yours. Thank you very much. Dear colleagues, we'll finalize this part of working session. Otherwise, we'll never start the second one. We'll have a small break. The agreement is being signed between the Association of Supporting of Digital Development and the Association of Traffic Engineers. On behalf of uh, Digital Development Association, the chairman of the board, uh, Mr. Rivkat Minikhanov, is signing the agreement. On behalf of the uh, ATE, the agreement is signed by Mr. Sultan Jankaziv. The agreement is signed. We have been cooperating with Sultan for a long time. Our association had been formed in June last year. Not many members were trying to limit uh, their members, mainly industrial uh, companies and the companies uh, with full integration. The succession is of value. I always say that we try to marry commercial structures that used to work on their own. And this is especially topical today in the era of pandemic. So we try to marry them with educational institutions who also have a life of their own. And the main thing is that unfortunately in the regions, uh, the uh, state governance is uh, certainly in priority, though we think it may be changed. And move more towards the industrial enterprises. We have very serious uh, uh, large cities now. But we certainly envy the potential of St. Petersburg. And I want to express my gratitude to the organizers. St. Petersburg Technical or Polytechnical University. And a separate thanks to you for your cooperation. Thank you. Thank you.
dear delegates the moderator of our second working session will be Sultan Jin Kaziv, the president of ATE, Association of Traffic Engineers. We carry on with our work, dear delegates. We maintain high activity. There are many delegates still connected and hopefully we'll be able to discuss in, uh, at a very good pace our activities in the area of uh, intelligent uh, traffic systems and the intelligent traffic systems ITS demand professional assessment what uh, has been achieved uh, what kind of achievements in the implementation of BKB project and the participants uh, of today's session on ITS intelligent transport uh, traffic systems and by the way, the exact name of this session is the main trends in the implementation of uh, traffic systems of regions and cities. Uh, so we have Ralph Peter Schaeffer, Vice President of Hong Kong in terms of uh, road uh, and traffic information. He will be connected remotely, already connected, thank you. Sergey Fatiev, uh, Head of uh, uh, Sberbank Solutions. Uh, Dmitry Stavsky, I can see you. Please join us on stage. Commercial Director of uh, Ros Telematica, Prokhorov Andrei Vecislavich, Chief Architect of the Analytical Rhythm 3 System, Deputy uh, General Manager of Symmetra, and Vladimir Varatovich who will be connected remotely. As far as I know, he is already monitoring and listening uh, to our conference. So we pass over to our last session. I want to mention straight uh, away that uh, we are lagging behind the timelines. Uh, this doesn't mean that uh, the quality will go down, but we'll have to stick to the timelines. So please, uh, as much as possible, uh, be time wise. And the questions, uh, I will receive them via the technical support. If we have uh, time enough, we'll ask the questions. If not, we'll ask them offline already, and then we'll add uh, the answers to these uh, questions to the material we still call the resolution. So transport planning and management using big data Please, uh, Vice President of TomTom, Tom, Traffic and Travel Information, Ralph Peter Schaeffer. You're welcome. The floor is yours. I hope you, you can see me. We can see, we can see you. And you can hear me as well. Okay, and you see my screen, I hope. Okay, Carl Schau. Good. Um, my name is Ralf Peter Schäfer. I am from TomTom, Tom, and I would like to um, discuss a few aspects of uh, traffic information planning and management. Um, I've been dealt in the last 20 years, but also talking what we're doing in TomTom Tom on what trends we see in general in the industry and the uh, general ecosystem uh, around the world. So what I want to start is a bit um, what, what I see in, in, in the domain of, um, of transport, there's a lot uh, going on. And um, there are a few drivers, which is mainly driven by uh, the big uh, topic of digitalization. Big data is, is, a, is a huge topic everywhere. And it has also reached the uh, traffic management information space. The cars connected, the user are connected, and there is an ecosystem of, of sharing um, um, applications and, and data, which is an opportunity for many things, and um, in particular in the domain I'm active in information and, and transport. Of course, the, the big challenge for cities around the globe and uh, transport authorities is the topic of uh, CO2 reduction, um, which comes along with the uh, trend to remove, replace the combustion engine electrification. EVs are more and more popular, and we're seeing even now after the uh, coming the end of the pandemic, uh, that uh, electric cars having a higher pace of, of purchase. And this is also contributing to this, uh, to this trend. 
Automation is also driven by better availability of technology, processing power and data, and, and sensors, which drives uh, advanced driver assistant and autonomous driving activities. And important for the cities and the um, uh, ecosystem for, for people is how I can manage um, road, transportation, road transportation in balance with other modes of transport like pedestrian, public transport, and bring the demand in a, in a control. And big data can help here as well. And I want to show you a few examples how we can help uh, from Tom Tom perspective. So basically, um, yeah, going the in, in attempt to uh, bring uh, the topic of modal split in a, in a better shape. And uh, in, in some cities are more ex, uh, successful as others. There's a, the method of uh, congestion charging to reduce traffic demand in city centers. London is a long-term example. In Singapore, even now, the way is uh, going dynamic. You have dynamic toll charging to reduce uh, and the, the load and more distribute demand. But growingly important for cities is also in the evolve public transport and uh, bikes as other modes of transport to reduce uh, road congestion and bring the, uh, the total transportation system more in a balance, more suitable for the people and uh, bringing space back to the people uh, in, in the heart of the cities. And that is a huge task. Copenhagen or Amsterdam, cities where there was a good success, but it's still a challenge um, around the globe. Congestion is still growing despite we had a bit of low congestion with the pandemic. But this is still something to be, to be done and there is technology there can support these plans. In traffic management, big data contribute a lot to also change this ecosystem. And Tom Tom and other companies helped to build technology to really trans, uh, transfer big data into traffic information systems. which is already a standard today you have fantastic information about the network where gems appear. You can reroute around gems and go faster from A to B, but also we can measure the pain um, everywhere, how much uh, congestion is available. We have built an, a number of tools based on big data, uh, and I will go through here in a number of examples, how to monitor network uh, performance, uh, uh, congestion level, travel time behavior on roads and whole cities, and even traffic demand. And then we can distribute and uh, bring in the car and more and more going in a feedback loop coming from monitoring also to traffic control, which is also a, a bit of a theme in my presentation. What is, what is also an, an interesting aspect, um, we are really in, in, at a point of time where there is also disruption in a classical traffic management arena, which was typically done by sensors in the pavement, inductive loops, uh, laser uh, um, uh, measurement and uh, so forth. And with the success of the connected car and users, we have millions of probe data becoming available. There is um, a change coming along that those two ecosystems can be married to uh, really uh, create an, a next ecosystem of data to drive traffic uh, management and control to the next level and utilizing the big data available. And this is uh, uh, along the way that classic uh, traditional authorities has uh, the duty to, to collaborate, to make this whole thing work and utilize um, the uh, technology in a way that uh, whole networks can better optimize and the flow of traffic and demand can bring in a balance. So there's even a uh, change even uh, in, in the auto industry also um, there's a, a trend that even stakeholders uh, started to share data. There's more collaboration coming between uh, st state authority for traffic management and, and car makers and uh, suppliers like uh, TomTom and others to, uh, to utilize available data from the car, like um, accident messages from the, um, uh, from the car itself or from camera observations. and. Um, this can be shared even across uh, different brands, even competing brands, to really make a better uh, service available to reduce um, uh, really uh, people dying on the road, but also increase road safety. And there's a collaboration. Here's an example on the EU level, which was uh, signed an agreement uh, two or three years uh, ago. So this um, 
what I call car centricity is an ecosystem where Tom Tom and other stakeholders are heavily in. The car uh, became the sensor to sense uh, behavior of people and, uh, and, and, and road transportation in the loop together with the navigation system. And it's a very powerful flywheel to measure traffic, but growingly also analyze the data in real time and predict traffic demand, uh, gem tails, uh, gem information and uh, network behavior of whole networks to manage traffic, traffic in a more efficient way. And this fully without infrastructure or at least a combination of local sensor data and, and floating cars, very powerful. And this is really an, an upcoming disruption where more and more cities and state authorities seeing the opportunity and merging data from local sensing and from the car. And uh, this is a good development and uh, bring us in better control what's going on on the street, but also importantly, how we can understand the traffic demand to make change offerings and bring the uh, mode of transport in a better balance. The beauty is um, navigation is today in everybody's hand in, in different uh, form factors. Uh, Tom Tom became first famous with the portable navigation device. Smartphones are very popular these days with the navigation system. In dash have a high penetration level. Everything is a, a system in the loop where you on one hand side can deliver and um, data data on, 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 on speeds and, uh, and, and route choice. On the other hand, you can give information back to the users in, in the loop and control single journeys, but growing the important with the penetration level, also cool networks, when you add even more information uh, to the navigation system from infrastructure like VMS displays, dynamic speed limits, traffic lights, and um, really use the navigation system as also an outlet to, to manage the whole networks and give relevant information for the journey and for network performance back to the user and use the navigation system as the center point of this traffic control system in the future. Here's an example uh, what a uh, massive amount of data can be gathered uh, to monitor traffic. We have uh, traffic information worldwide in 80 countries and uh, in, in, in all uh, countries in Europe, North America, um, in, in Asia, we have up to 20% penetration level. That means every fifth car, we have real-time data, including in, in Russia, like St. Petersburg and, uh, and Moscow. And here's a delay uh, network uh, from, from two days ago that pulled out on the uh, uh, live traffic system. And this is an, a zoom level on, an, um, on this road with the uh, probe measurements we do, we, we're doing on this load stretch but also color coding in red, blue and, uh, and, and, and uh, uh, blue color codes. The, the speed in red is uh, the traffic jams, blue is free flow. We have a very fine granular information and this is fully without infrastructure and a very powerful mechanism to understand traffic in any detail, even on lane level. This is really reality today and fantastic ground to understand traffic, but also go to the next level and manage traffic demand, route choice, and um, the, 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 uh, managing whole networks. What we, what we did, we um, really connecting uh, different aspects to the navigation system uh, in, in TomTom. So we, um, we started to utilize uh, a traffic light uh, cycle time and, uh, and playing with interfaces to uh, give um, uh, speed advice towards uh, junctions. We are um, thinking about uh, strategic routing, in particular, that you change uh, selfish routing optimizations algorithms and take into account more network effects, volume, and uh, that you have a better load balanced uh, route optimization. And um, this is important. And sometimes you see it uh, even in, in big cities like Moscow or St. Petersburg, when you apply selfish routing, then often you will send uh, in a detour in a small capacity road and there is another jam appearing. So you have to also reconsider how you design your routing optimization algorithms in navigation to take more into account capacity of a load link and the volume in, in terms of traffic demand. But also we can support uh, autonomous driving with uh, services to, to steer people in a uh, semi-automatic or automatic fashion 
where new uh, options are on the table with car-centric data from the canvas, but also with the widely available probe data. Very powerful. And this is uh, not a, a future science fiction, that's really reality and coming now uh, along the road. So we, um, we also uh, dealt um, with um, typical traffic management um, aspects. So we, um, we made some experiments. Is our probe data ecosystem already ready to replace infrastructure? This is here an example of Tokyo, where we made a, a proof of concept uh, two years ago and compared infrastructure in the road, where you have every 200 meters in inductive loop and uh, compare this, is there the same information available in our probe data? And in these three examples for three different junctions in Tokyo, we put a wonderful match between a cascade of five loops uh, every 200 meters with our uh, probe data we're seeing in, in our car centering ecosystem. And this was a ground to even build uh, products uh, around the um, uh, junction analytics. And here uh, is an example now, as we have rolled out uh, this tool, um, globally, how we can even monitor a specific junction, this case here at the Nevsky Prospect in, in St. Petersburg, we can monitor uh, historically and, and real time junctions and uh, have a number of parameters like delay time, uh, usually the queuing length, and this can update it every minute and, and used for uh, traffic light optimization to improve flow and uh, make it more adjustive for traffic demand. And this can happen completely without infrastructure in front of the traffic light, fully based on car-centric data, where we have here in St. Petersburg 20-25% of the cars we monitor in, in real time. But what you can also nicely do um, to make good uh, analysis in traffic demand and understand where people are going from where to where, and this is fully based on, um, on road trips, fully anonymous, without having expensive and low level so, uh, opinion polls or surveys asking people where they go, which is a classic. Here is really big data behind and you can make very fine granular origin destination matrices for simulation models and planning purposes. And this is of course much more representative as we monitor 20% plus of the car population here in this case uh, in, in Moscow. Of course, the, the big thing is understand traffic demand and, and traffic, and then make a policy choice, what is important and what works in your city. And this is different in Moscow, in Berlin or Paris or London. There must be a certain mix, which is called model split. And um, what technology and data can bring is a good understanding. But on the other hand, the politicians, the stakeholders in the government have to make good choices to utilize technology in the right way. This is the, the duty of uh, of authorities to, to plan and um, think about how to bring certain uh, mode of transport like public transport, bikes and pedestrian and cars in a, in a good balance and create an ecosystem where we have less congestion, but also more space in the cities for people. And here's a lot to do, but big data can help and, and support. So we are really um, with big data on a transformation phase and um, this is uh, exciting and a lot of opportunity for collaboration. And uh, the monitoring is already in, um, in everybody's hand. You can go with good navigation and, and traffic from A to B, but now it's really controlling the, the demand and also implement change to reduce congestion, which is still a big problem. And this is a good um, challenge to be continued and a call for collaboration between different stakeholders around the globe. Thank you very much. Lord. Well, had a very interesting trend, uh, but as usual, first we contemplate scientific and practical aspects of what our colleagues do in Europe, and we try to figure out what we can apply them in Europe and maybe create 
a parallel schools of thought and scientific knowledge. What you've demonstrated, I know about it, is the highest level of competence, the highest level of performance and execution. We cherished every word you said. It's so interesting. We have been cooperating since long way back with European scientific communities, uh, and uh, I hope that we'll develop those very good contacts in the interest of the Russian business, Russian sites. It was so gratifying, so pleasant for us to see that in this presentation in English, we saw slides translated into Russian. That means that there is a vast interest of European experts towards what is happening in Russia. And that by the same token, we are ready and willing to develop the dialogue and to be reciprocative as a scientific partner. Thank you so much. It was wonderful. Uh, if uh, Rav Vedder uh, Schaefer is still here, it's great. Later on, we can discuss it more. Now, thank you very much. Welcome. Continue. Welcome and our work and we have got a small adjustment in the program i already announced that on behalf of the spare band we'll have the presentation uh about digital technologies it will be done uh by the head of divisions of spare bank sergey fatiev sergey you're here with us but I should ask you and the speakers who will be after you uh, just to be brief because we're back. Thank you, dear colleagues. Thank you so much for introduction. I would like to share my screen. Can you help me with that? Thank you. Very interesting topic, very wonderful. I'm very glad uh, to participate. Uh, I'll speak on behalf of Sberbank Russia, major trends of digitalization of transport systems of cities and regions. I'm Sergey Fatev. I'm director uh, the, for the uh, cash free cash-free uh, channels uh, uh, in the territory of Northwest Federal uh, County. Everything which is related to uh, cash-free payments and uh, payments uh, by card uh, on transport as well. This is in our competence. Bear bank in transport sector. It's not just the ability to pay by banking card, bank's card, or a, a travel card. It's the entire infrastructure of its own. There are five major components here, whereby we and where we make uh, life regions more technological, leasing, leasing of transportation vehicles uh, and social identification being uh, based payment on the transport, transport acquiring uh, an integrated solution of a smart city. I'll dwell on some of those parts. Let's uh, think back to the involvement of the mechanism of paying uh, the fare on transport over a couple of decades. Uh, the outset of 2000s mostly paid by cash. Uh, it's uh, a bus uh, receiving uh, the payment for tickets and a very big uh, uh, gray uh, zone turnover of cash St. Petersburg uh, uh, the Paterozhny travel card evolved uh, for certain social groups of population and in Moscow it's Troika card it's possible to do online payment uh, Or on the card, uh, the card 
uh, which is reported in the cloud of data as rapid development of acquiring technologies was and will be able to use acquiring on the rolling stock, which is very important. And the by the past, it's not difficult. It was difficult for us to do all that. And then NFC contact free payment technology came along. Uh, that way we developed uh, NFC system of or cash free payment on the transport. Then we started piloting the biometrics. It first tested in Moscow a metro way as a bank owner of the largest descriptor base, base, so it became possible for us. First of all, it's done for the convenience of the passengers uh, and uh, transportation companies. So what can we offer here? If uh, we digress from payment alone and get on to a broader definition of infrastructure, first of all, it's dispatching system. It's route monitoring and online research of passenger flows. Amanda mentioned that in future it will make uh, it possible and easy for transportation companies uh, to plan routes and uh, to make use of resources. Next, uh, uh, smart stops, visualization of arrival of routes, interactive system of planning of routes and payment. You can see it in many uh, cities. Uh, intelligent crossings uh, are mindful of the location of uh, vehicles. That way it's possible to manage traffic lights uh, uh, to provide for rapid comfortable crossing by uh, public uh, transport. Lighting system of managing street lighting depending on time of the day, traffic monitoring, lamps, whether they are in order, we did that in St. Petersburg on Chizik Road. Very simple example uh, is the traffic lights. Uh, on the computer of the tramway, there is the information about the average uh, speed uh, to keep to. two tramways might cross the crossing simultaneously. That way there will be no stock and congestion in the passenger cars traffic. Mindful of uh, digitalization, biometrics. Uh, as the future, it's our present. Biometrics, uh, hard to find any drawbacks and faults in commercial payment and uh, commercial transport and, and payment systems. Uh, knowledge. What is as well uh, the rescue, uh, so the search for wanted uh, citizens. Uh, 49 people were detained, those who were at large for, uh, uh, who were in tracing, excuse me, for several years. So it's very important for law enforcement uh, agencies as well, this biometric data. Uh, about monitoring of a driver, driver's um, identification. 
also countering uh, uh, car theft and uh, recognition of uh, vehicles in traffic flow also passenger identification when passenger gets through the turnstile without producing the card biometrics can help uh, paying the fare for the ride by the identification of the passenger i guess i wrap it here i'll take your questions if any time for that or there are no questions maybe offline sidelines of the conference will respond to all the questions uh, there will be feedback thank you that's very much yes of course there will be questions coming up it's a very important topic for specialists i've got one brief question we're all on the threshold uh, of a big uh, quality transition in the sphere of mobility management, a transition to services. And in those services, uh, robustness and the reliability of rapid payment will be very good. Is it possible to pay by voice, voice payment, uh, when the uh, passenger is driving in his passenger car uh, to uh, pay? for the toll road or whatever uh, to pay. Uh, all those uh, solutions uh, are done. Well, uh, they don't mean that driver is participating and that passenger is paying via validator. I should specify what I mean. Let's imagine uh, that a, uh, a driver is able to order a service of uh, more rapid access to the final point of his destination. Uh, bus driver has to pay for it because it's an extra service. Is it possible uh, to do that so that the driver would not get his hand off the wheel, uh, but uh, pay for extra service uh, to bring the bus much more rapidly to the final point of destination. Thank you. Uh, because when it's a contact-free uh, service, contact-free order, and it's easy to implement, that would be great. Thank you. Dear participants, we'll continue. Of course, there will be questions. There is activity here. Um, we keep accumulating those uh, questions. Uh, transportation systems of cities and regions, uh, CFO of Rostelematical, of Rostelecom, a good old friend of ours since long, we back Dmitry Stavsky, uh, commercial um, fi chief commercial financial officer, CFO for of Rostelecom. We're tied on the schedule, so I will not torture you with lengthy presentations. Uh, to briefly outline some uh, major. Uh, implications uh, and what we encountered in the process uh, of uh, implementation of those processes in Russian Federation. 2020 was started within the framework of safe roads uh, for the development of uh, individual traffic systems and the main criteria were cities with over 300,000 population with uh, subsidies for such uh, generations. Initially, there were 64 centers, but due to unexpected pandemic, COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic, uh, approximately half of these uh, subjects of the Federation received their allocated funds. 
and what we came across in the process of one year of work with the implementing these measures helped us single out three main things. First, the subjects that received the subsidies had different background approaching this situation, as well as a different state of development of the system. Some of them were quite well advanced already. For example, with the uh, photographic evidence uh, on the roads, uh, and uh, the centers of uh, uh, road traffic control have been in existence in some regions, but some of them were actually green field. So we had to start from scratch. In other words, the startup capital of different subjects so the federation was absolutely different and the project was really very atypical and the approach in terms of implementation of the projects in various regions was also uh, varied a lot some of them accepted our methodology the necessity to introduce uh, uh, a uniform platform, but some other regions considered ITS as follows. We're going uh, to improve some roads, install some cameras, and that will be our ITS, uh, intelligent uh, traffic systems. So we had to educate them, raise their awareness of what the ITS is all about, explain how things should be done correctly and how these projects have to be uh, implemented. Based on this, one of our proposals came to life. That is the development of the schedules for interaction. Probably systemized somehow the approaches to the creation of uh, ITS. This will allow to use things that already, uh, that the regions already have and help form the correct approach. The second issue we, or the second block of uh, issues we came across. Uh, people ask us, what are we going to have uh, as a result of this implementation? We all understood that there are separate module for public transport management, uh, different auxiliary uh, machines on the road, like uh, cleaning machines. Uh, what were we striving to achieve at the end of the day? I think there are about six or 10 indicators, like increasing the throughput uh, of the uh, road uh, network, decrease of uh, uh, road uh, calamities and um, accidents. But as a whole, I've seen in one of the technical assignments, uh, 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 ITS, one piece, but nobody could explain what this one piece of ITS meant. In connection with this, we thought about uh, systematization and classification of the regulatory basis uh, uh, and uh, norms uh, so that the regions uh, uh, would understand conceptually what exactly they will receive when they implement their system and what this is meant for, certainly for the improvement, for raising the comfort and quality 
of life of the population. But we have to be able to explain uh, things not on paper, but uh, so that the people understand what exactly they will get in return. And now the third block, which is in fact an organizational discrepancy. When inside uh, the um, agglomeration or uh, whatever it is the city or several small towns together there is uh, a, a kind of uh, different understandings of what they need and very often motor road cameras are installed only in the town or city and uh, the authorities uh, have their idea as uh, to how these things should uh, uh, operate and look like so uh, the um, subject of the Federation receives the allocated money, the subsidy, uh, but then the holistic picture that they have in mind very often uh, doesn't go hand in hand with what we have in our minds. Hence, we thought that there is a possibility to form interdepartmental working groups uh, for them to develop the main vectors and possibilities of all their players uh, to the process. So that's the main thing I wanted to deliver. As I promised uh, to be brief, I was brief. But certainly there are more questions than uh, the ones that I've uh, uh, told you about and also in various regions uh, one of the measures have to come first uh, in other regions uh, the order of the measures may be a little bit different some people try to uh, do everything as quick as possible without laying their due foundation so we need uh, real standards in two words that's it thank you very much dmitry let's give a hand of applause uh, i certainly uh was much uh, uh enthralled by its one piece its in pieces uh, i can't understand uh, what they meant taking into account how many modules are needed, I think 16 modules. And each subsystem envisages a certain set of uh, many other things. You can understand that people simply do not understand anything if they write ITS one piece. There is no scale I know by which I can measure ITS in pieces. Dmitry, I have one concomitant question. You are on the forefront of implementing the projects. The problem you've mentioned, to my opinion, the only one that doesn't have even a proposal on how to resolve it, when there are discrepancies inside the region, uh, let's not call them conflict, uh, in terms of how to distribute their funds. How? do you think uh, this should be managed uh, uh, some regulatory or statutory act or uh, build the process in such a way that uh, the different departments will come to terms i think certain federal recommendations or guidelines have to be developed 
because uh, otherwise it is sometimes very difficult to come to terms even within the framework of one and the same region. In the format of uh, interdepartmental working groups, such guidelines or recommendations will be very, very useful. And uh, they have to be uh, strengthened by some uh, governmental decree or whatever. We would expect from you some proposal if you think this is uh, necessary, because uh, uh, within one week after the end of our conference, we are going to discuss such proposals with the Department of uh, Motor Traffic. And we'll have to express uh, our well-prepared expert position. If you see this proposal as a possibility to regulate such issues, let's develop uh, it further and propose it at the ministerial departmental level. Thank you, thank you. And dear delegates, we are moving forward. We still have two very important presentations. And it is very important for us to look at the experience of uh, implementation of uh, ITS uh, from the representative of a company who is part of uh, AT, the deputy general manager of Symmetra, uh, the architect of the Rhythm 3 system. Thanks a lot. Good afternoon, everybody. Please, uh, can you put my presentation on screen? I will try to do uh, my to deliver my presentation laconically and uh, interestingly. We've uh, shown our system at other conferences many times, but if anybody finds it. Uh, interesting and has questions, we are ready to answer them anytime, tomorrow or maybe even later on. Many things may overlap with already thing, with things already mentioned before. We understand the issues in a similar way and that's uh, a signal to sit down around the table and discuss them. So that's uh, the plan of my presentation. Uh, what ITS is all about, uh, or what is uh, EPUTS as uh, the upper level of ITS. Um, so intellect and the intelligent uh, traffic systems, their definitions. Why we develop ITS? We develop them for the sake of management. What do we manage? We manage mobility. Mobility of cargoes, passenger flows. And from our point of view, the tool for managing mobility are or is models. You've already seen this slide about various projects being implemented like Smart City, Safe City, and ITS uh, uh, under the aegis of the Ministry of Transport of the Russian Federation. And all these projects have to be interconnected. I think many of you know this schematic. It shows the architecture of ITS with different modules. Uh, the so-called uh, rhythm system and the EPUTS uh, modules. Very often people look only at the upper level. And this is not right. 
because uh, it uh, uh, actually brings down the uh, diversity of this system and the comprehensiveness of it. Uh, we have to go from top to bottom. And as a reminder, in the uh, existing, in one of the existing goals, so the state uh, standards, there is such a schematic for the integrational ITS platform. There are no separate modules, but the functions conducted by the integrational platform are described very well. The main idea is to coordinate the work of subsystems, provide the system of decision-making support, and this is very important. As of now, at that, that's what we have uh, uh, right now within the framework of ITS. The existence of the methodology is already a big step forward. And the existence of uh, a specific architecture is also a big step forward. The main thing is for all of us to create some broader subsystems attracting uh, all their players, all the participants of the market, and try to achieve what uh, uh, partially has already been achieved in some countries like uh, the US, for example. So working with ITS now is practically like this. When we have a jigsaw puzzle, uh, we know what uh, we are aiming to achieve. Uh, at some point, we see that we have achieved something, but this is not exactly what we were aiming to achieve. We tried to re uh, reconsider together with the colleagues uh, what uh, we have now. To our opinion, uh, the responsibilities are not singled out, responsibilities of each and every module and subsystems. And another important thing is that the functions and uh, roles uh, at each and every level, at the level of the municipalities uh, and uh, other levels. Yeah, that we should go upwards. Uh, oh, we start from two positions. Company which uh, has been around for many years on end, we do professional modeling uh, and model is that entity that uh, research and calculation analytical kernel, which has got all the data, which supports decision-making process and different scenario plans. It uses digital twins and plans for the municipal development. Uh, so we start from the cent and then we go downwards. Uh, in many regions, we work with the documents of transport planning, and we're fully aware that we should have an integrated view upon the task, otherwise we won't be able to deal with the problem. I have to speed it up. Everybody is tired by now. A few words, a few slides about our development. Better into this uh, uh, project. Uh, read me, it has been in the register of the Russian list of software for several years already. Main idea is to compile all the data and to tie them up uh, uh, between themselves and to use this model as a kernel. And in our system, it's possible
from the source, source code, which are available in the market as well. Here are the functional modules which existed before the methodology came along. Now we are rearrange those modules. It's very good, good that we have got this module structure, but we have got four modules which covered major tasks from monitoring, dispatching, planning, modeling, and control. Uh, this uh, schema it's in consumer equilibrium. Uh, it's macro, la macro level models for strategic analysis of long term planning. They're called uh, user equilibrium because they are based on the routing of every person, every passenger, their personal preferences, and they show standard demand and distribution of flows. Then we use online data and there will be adaptive dynamic models. It's part of a digital twin digital twin of a road and a digital twin of a transport system connected to sensors. That way we may come up with forecasts. And the third type of the model is there. It could be helpful to distribute the flows in the right way when we'll be looking into the future. The models of system equilibrium, the algorithm calculated not optimal route of each and every person, but the optimal route on the whole, mindful of the entire system. This is about future when we'll have lots of those ROVs, remotely operated vehicles, and so on. And it will reduce time cost for all that way. This will be very useful models for mobility management. Examples, we implemented our solutions in different cities and different modules, different parts we participated in designing and now we continue working in different uh, uh, regions of the city, we, of the country, we work in Chelyabinsk town, in Nizhny Tagil, and in other regions of the Russian Federation as well. And also, we developed the system when we are saying about the integration uh, with uh, traffic lights. Uh, development uh, and the visualization of data and so on from the standpoint of the model made ideas that will be able to take into account the actual uh, data of uh, traffic regulation uh, in real time. Uh, this is one of the tasks uh, we should coordinate uh, the work uh, on the very verge uh, of the region on the borderline between the region and uh, between the zone and the city and the different city zones and so on. Wide in conclusion, I would like to express several thoughts, which one way or the other were already underscored in different presentations. First, manpower, education power are a big uh, problem of ours as well. And we also have our own conferences, which are very interesting. I myself lecture in the universities, and I am very grateful to so grateful to Sultan Jan Kaziev uh, uh, because uh, I also lecture at the transport Institute. And it's very important for us to develop our transport system for the future. Methodologies and standards, uh, a lot has been said about that. We should develop and actualize our methodologies, which should outreach more specialists and professionals. Open. Uh, data uh, banks. Uh, uh, this is a very important issue, but it goes rather slowly. And the projects and methodologies of intelligent transport systems, it's this idea of data transfer from city to region, from region to the country nationwide. It's very good. We structure different formats of data management, and that way will enhance the quality of the project. And uh, we come up with, we'll come 
come up with very good transport solutions, uh, tools uh, for uh, the forecast, but we'll be using uh, very valid data one way or the other. In the end, I'll show you several slides. In the beginning, I mentioned USC architecture. In the center, they place services. Uh, like it very much and they are confined to different agreements requirements functions uh, limits of applications and so on and the methodology their architecture of the program has been developing actualized uh, this is very interesting i like it very much this uh, intelligent transport systems architecture in the us and how it was evolving you can see that recently uh, new innovations are coming along year in year out changing parts of the architecture and the beauty of it is that on the one hand this architecture has got great details and on the other hand it's forward looking and we can plan our projects in a better way and to be transparent with systemic and uh, rational methodology for the regions of the russian federation how they should embark upon their projects so i hope it was not very boring and very long thank you everyone thank you very much andre I can but respond to the information that you are lecturing at my place, so I cannot ask you certain questions. Nonetheless, the number of questions on your presentation has been growing, but that will be the case for all the uh, presentations. Uh, we'll refer all those questions. Uh, to the uh, speakers, the only thing is that the US concept is appealing and attractive, first of all, because it's available, does not uh, mean altogether that it's uh, uh, best one. There are other ones as well, but maybe they're uh, slightly lagging behind it. Standardization of services, which is done in America, is very important. This is the policies of openness of uh, US uh, Transportation Department. Uh, does it mean altogether that it's the best one? I've got some materials uh, about the number of uh, regions, and I might dispute that. I didn't say that this system is the best of all. I just referred to it as the architecture which is viable, it develops, it's uh, available, and uh, I would say that uh, we can mimic it fully in our place, but at least you informed our professional community, especially young uh, scientists, that there is a resource of available and affordable information uh, that uh, understand some English language uh, and uh, it's described in a very straightforward English language. Uh, so very easy way so that it would be possible to translate it. Uh, I'm saying that because I'm a partner and participant of those international venues and international platforms uh, and my language english language knowledge is not very big but it's sufficient for me to uh have a discourse in those platforms and maybe you will learn german as well because german is important for us we copyright with our german colleagues a lot vladimir is waiting for us to complete our first day we should seek uh, the opinion of a person who is in the very center of european knowledge on intellect intelligence transport systems the organization which concentrates all the knowledge all the projects in europe is called Article ITS Europe and the head of the innovations and implementations of innovations of Arctico, Arctico ITS Europe, Vladimir Vorotovich, who would like to know what you think about development and implementation of digital technologies on uh, intellectual transport systems. Vladimir? Uh, good afternoon. Well, glad to see you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, dear colleagues, it is my pleasure to be with you, at least in the online format today, 
Uh, this is my third attendance to this conference. In 2018 and 2019, I was present physically and participated. And I would like to thank the Association of Transport Engineers for inviting me to talk with you today as representative of Ertico. So I have a very short presentation for you, and then uh, I'm happy to take questions. Uh, can you just see my slides, please? Yeah, okay, thank you. So very briefly going into as a uh, distinguished president, Spasiba. Uh, as the distinguished president of the association introduced me, uh, we are at the center of the Europe and the development of ITS. We are the umbrella organization of ITS in Europe. We are based in Brussels in Belgium and funded in 1992 at the initiative of uh, members of the European Commission, ministries of transport in Europe, as well as the European transport industry. Uh, Ertico brings together eight different uh, sectors that are, the, that are shown on this uh, slide, uh, working to, together on a smart, sustainable and safe mobility. Uh, the partnership is about 120 partners strong. You can see the partners uh, logos on the screen. Uh, it is a public private partnership that has the representatives from the cities from the regional and, and uh, national level on the public sector, from the research institutes, from the service providers and suppliers, traffic and technology uh, commercial partners, as well as the vehicle manufacturers. Uh, what I want to show here is the way that Ertico works, and I will show a few very brief examples of our activities. Uh, on the left hand side, you can see the vision and, and, and also the mission of Ertico. I'm happy to see that that aligns very well, for instance, with my previous, uh, with the colleagues who spoke before me about the management of mobility. Uh, and that, that's the mission of Ertico. Uh, we work uh, 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 on international cooperation. We are behind the World uh, ITS Congress, and I will show you a little bit that, about that. And we are the thought leaders on the innovation and deployment of smart mobility solutions across you, uh, both Europe and actually globally. We participate in projects that are deployed around the world. Uh, very briefly, uh, Ertico uh, created a vision 2030 for mobility. These are the key words from the vision. And we as a partnership see a concept of mobility as a service as one of the key concepts uh, to deliver the vision. Why this is important for me and my role within Ertico, we have four focus areas in Ertico. We work on one area is connected and automated driving. The other one is clean mobility. One is transport and logistics. And the one that I'm leading is urban mobility and mobility as a service. So the focus is of delivering that vision that I just shown you through the projects and activities of Ertico in that respect. One of the activities I'm happy to share with you um, is Ertico's global survey of cities, 200 cities in Europe, 100 outside Europe on topics such as our uh, sustainability, data sharing and mobility as a service or mobility on demand. And uh, this is the map of Europe, uh, uh, which shows we have about 100 cities uh, interviewed to date. And I would also like to thank the association uh, for uh, uh, helping us bridging the contact in number of cities in the Russian Federation and in the Commonwealth of Independent States, uh, where we conducted interviews in Moscow, in Kiev, in Chisnau, in Yekaterinburg, uh, in um, uh, Minsk, and uh, we will interview very soon uh, Kazan, uh, which is also one of the hosts of the next congresses. Um, the other activity that is important for you, and uh, it has been mentioned, and I also uh, monitor and aware of your uh, knowledge transfer activities in association, the book that just was presented earlier today as well, Ertico is uh, having a dedicated ITS training program. Uh, it is called the Ertico Academy, and within it, you can see on the slide 
some of the uh, topics and modules that we uh, conduct through our training, both face-to-face -face and online. And there are some additional programs that are listed on the slide as well. Uh, I would actually like that part of these trainings, we also work together with the association and deliver trainings in the Russian Federation and uh, the region. Two final slides for me. Uh, I'm happy as the umbrella organization of uh, Europe, ERTICO, uh, with co-organization of ITS America and ITS Asia Pacific to invite you to the ITS World Congress in, from the 11th to the 15th of October this year in Hamburg, Germany. Uh, after postponing the last year events, due to pandemic. This will be one of the big events for our industry. Uh, we anticipate something like 15,000 uh, visitors, a number of exhibitors, a number of papers that we already received in the demonstrations, uh, mainly about the six topics you see on the slide here. So please come and uh, say hi and, and visit us in Hamburg, Germany. But that's not all. I'm also happy to tell you that Although the last year planned Congress, ITS Central Eastern Congress in Kazan in the Russian Federation has been postponed because of the pandemic, it will happen from the 19th to the 21st of September, 2022. And this event is organized by ERTICO, hosted by the government of the Republic of Tatarstan and supported by uh, uh, important institutions in the Russian Federation. And I also have a, a slide here to show that even if we postpone the physical event, we uh, conduct a number of webinars and conferences, similar like this one. And this is a screenshot from the Kazan Di Digital Week that happened uh, about this time last year. Uh, but of course, we all look forward to this, these two main ITS events uh, in world and Europe and Central Eastern Congress or ITS Congress in Hamburg and ITS Central Eastern Congress in Kazan. Uh, and with that, I will conclude my presentation. Thank you for your attention. You have my contact details. Please reach out. Greetings. Thanks a lot, dear Vladimir. You're always very dear guest of ours. We'll be very glad. We'll pop in and say, say hello. I have it in my plans to visit Hamburg. And in Kazan also, we'll uh, discuss different issues with you. We'll just shake hands, say hi to each other, and also discuss very important professional issues, solutions, uh, share our experience. Thanks a lot for your participation once again. Let's put our hands together uh, for uh, the uh, keynote speakers and uh, dear participants. We finalized the first day quite successful, although we're slightly behind the scale, but it's okay, no big deal, I think. Uh, as to myself, I can feel that only by the end of this day, I feel the flavor of those discussions. And I'm most reluctant to finalize this conference. And mind you, I announce not a buffet party now. I would say that we'll have a professional and non-professional discourse. It will be... Um, informal networking, but it will be very glad we can do it uh, uh, at this buffet party and we'll have to be prepared for that as well, uh, because uh, uh, very uh, busy day is over. There are lots of questions which accumulate, we'll have to discuss it. But before finishing this day, I would like uh, to thank our speakers whose voices we heard. Let's thank wonderful interpreters. This is a very difficult professional work. Thanks a lot. We don't see you, but we hear you on tomorrow.